We're back at Craft Field for game two of this three-game series between the Wheat City Whiskey Jacks and the Sioux Falls Sunfish. Last night, the Sunfish were victorious in game one, nine to seven. It looked like the Whiskey Jacks were going to mount a comeback in the ninth inning, but still ended up losing game one by two runs. The Sunfish now four and one to kick off the second half of the season have basically made a complete 180 since the, the beginning of this inaugural 2021 season where they went 0-5 before getting their first win ever here at Craft Field against the Whiskey Jacks while Wheat City sits at 2-2 two two through their first four games. Now overall two games under 500. Hello Sunfish fans and Wheat City Whiskey Jacks fans. It's David Coyer bringing you all of the action this afternoon for game one and game two of today's doubleheader on the Sunfish Radio Network and the Wheat City Whiskey Jacks live stream. The Sioux Falls Sunfish have a pretty solid looking lineup today and here it is. Jonathan Brandon will lead things off followed by Tanner Wilson and Zeph Hoffpower. Norris McClurb will bat cleanup today over at shortstop. Gannon Thompson, Kenneth Dutka, Dane Frazier, Carter Tibbetts and Declan Beers will be the lineup today for Sioux Falls with Sam Marhefke on the mound for the Wheat City Whiskey Jacks, a very familiar name for the Sunfish. Marhefke has made quite a few appearances against Sioux Falls this season. The first pitch is grounded over to the third, stopped by McKee. It rolls away from him. He can't come up with it. And that'll be a leadoff base hit for Jonathan Brandon on the first pitch he sees. First pitch, 5:33 here from Craft Field. Game one underway just about two minutes early. There will be a game two later. Again, with the doubleheader format in the Expedition League, it will be two seven-inning games. The Sunfish and the Whiskey Jacks have already had a doubleheader this season. That's the only doubleheader of the season for Sioux Falls. It came on that Sunday, Father's Day, from Carroll, Iowa. It'll be Tanner Wilson as Jonathan Brandon runs on the first pitch. Keenan O'Brien's throw will go right into center field. Jonathan Brandon's up and running the third. The throw in from Cameron Daigle will be stopped by McKee. And on one swing of the bat, Jonathan Brandon gets over to first. On the next pitch, he makes it all the way over to third. A stolen base and an E2 get him all the way over to third. And the Sunfish are already 90 feet away from striking first in this one. It's Owen Viano in left, Cameron Daigle in center, and Houston Fogelstrom in right field for the Wheat City Whiskey Jacks. Dylan McKee, Dean Bittner on the left side, Ethan Sitzman and Noah Nolan Lingley on the right. Keenan O'Brien behind the plate for Sam Marhefke. Tanner Wilson's ahead, one ball, no strikes. He takes a fastball, slow liner over to Bittner at short. He plays it off the one hop, gets Tanner Wilson, but Jonathan Brandon will score. The Sunfish are up early. It's one nothing Sioux Falls on the ground out by Tanner Wilson. Completely different ball game, start to the ball game than last night. The Whiskey Jacks would keep the Sunfish scoreless until the fourth inning where the Sunfish would tie it up 3-3 before scoring six more the next inning. Zeff Hoffpower takes a fastball in from Marhefke. Coming into today's game, this will mark Marhefke's fifth start of the season. Had 30 innings pitched. Allowed 24 earned runs off 10 walks, 26 strikeouts. He's got a 2-2 two two record. Off power swings and misses on one. It's a 1-1 one -one count. Marhefke hasn't made an appearance since June 30th against the Western Nebraska Pioneers where he got a 7-inning win. Holding the Pioneers to just four runs. Hoffpower takes this one to center field and deep drifting back is Daigle who will make the catch just in front of the warning track in dead center field. Hoffpower promised me a home run yesterday. Hadn't made a promise to me like that in quite a while. 
And it looked like it might have gotten that as there's a breeze blown out to center field. With two away, it's Norris McClure, the shortstop for Sioux Falls today. Marhefke has a six even ERA coming into today's game. Then it's gone up a little bit as Jonathan Brandon has already scored in the first inning. A fastball misses high and away to McClure, the lefty. McClure played yesterday in the Sunfish win. Went two for four with two RBIs. Takes a ball low at the ankles. It's two balls, no strikes. After starting the season with a considerable hitting streak, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine game hitting streak in his first nine games. He went 0 for four in the Sunfish rally against the Moo last week and has started a new hitting streak. Currently five straight games as one bounces in the dirt inside and McClure is up 3-0. Marhefke pitched against the Sunfish in game one of the three game series from Carroll, Iowa. Went five innings, allowed two earned runs off five hits. Here's the 3-0. A ground ball to the right side. That'll be backhanded by Lingley. Marhefke racing over to first. He'll beat McClure in the foot race. Norris grounds out on a 3-0 pitch. But the Sunfish strike first. One run in the first inning. The Whiskey Jacks will have their response when we return in the bottom half. We have a correction to the scoring. Jonathan Brandon, I originally credited with a hit. The official scoring is it was an E5. So in that first inning, one run scores off no hits, two errors, with no one left on base for the Sunfish. They lead 1-0. We're in the bottom half of the first inning of this game one of the doubleheader, and it'll be Ethan Sitzman back in the lineup for the Whiskey Jacks. He did not play last night. The first game all season that he did not play against the Sioux Falls Sunfish. The first pitch from Mitch Stone misses in. It'll be Mitch Stone on the mound for Sioux Falls. One of the aces, he leaves a fastball high, but it'll be popped up to Gannon Thompson in right field for out number one. On the season for Mitch Stone, this is his eighth start, the most by any Sunfish pitcher. Has pitched 35 innings, 44 strikeouts, which is good for, well, at least top three in the Expedition League. He throws a fastball that hits the inside corner to Dean Bittner. And we'll actually go and triple check just to make sure. I'm pretty sure Stone leads the Expedition League in strikeouts. Throws another fastball this time away. It's looked at for a ball by Bittner. The 1-1. Fastball comes in at the knees for strike two. Bittner 
Thought that one looked a little bit low, and from right here behind home plate, might have been. We're starting to get to see what the established zone is. The 1-2. It's a slider that drops in just outside. It's a 2-2 count. Stone again, just a fastball slider pitcher. There's another fastball right into the glove of Dane Frazier off the hop. He fires it across the infield for out number two. Almost got it on the line drive, did Frazier. He kind of trapped it, kept it in the infield, picked it up and fired from corner to corner and got Bittner by about half a step. Two away quickly here in the bottom of the first inning. It's the big man, Jake Jelly, who will be designated hitting today. Owen Viano, Nolan Lingley, Dylan McKee, Houston Fogelstrom, Keenan O'Brien, and Cameron Daigle, the rest of the Whiskey Jacks lineup. Breaking ball misses away on the first pitch to Jelly. So actually Stone is not in first, base, first place anymore. Nick McCollum, in fact, is in second. A hard hit ball into the alleyway in right center field is caught by Tanner Wilson. Three up, three down for Mitch Stone. It's 1-0 Sunfish after one from Craft Field. Back on the Sunfish Radio Network and the Whiskey Jacks live stream on YouTube. The Sioux Falls Sunfish lead 1-0 after a quick first inning. Jonathan Brandon would swing at the first pitch, reach on an E5, and on the next pitch, the first one to Tanner Wilson would make it all the way over to third on a stolen base and an E2. He would then score on the ground out by Tanner Wilson. And that's how we've got to a 1-0 ball game. Mitch Stone would force the Whiskey Jacks to go 3-up, three 3-down three as Gannon Thompson takes a breaking ball that bounces in front of home plate for ball one. You're all caught up for this. I wouldn't even call it a matinee as we started at 5:33, but it's an earlier ball game than usual for either team. Here's the 1-0 to Thompson. A fastball just misses below the knees of the 6-7 righty from Sioux Falls. Thompson last night went 0 for 2 with two walks. Scored twice, though. He stole home on what was a very questionable decision. Stole on two strikes with two outs. Pitch misses low. He's ahead 3-0. And what was questionable was there was two strikes to Dane Frazier. The ball was coming in. It would have been a strike, and if Thompson scored, it still wouldn't have mattered because Frazier would have struck out, so Dane was forced to swing. He luckily got on on a grounder to Dean Bittner at short. The 3-0 to Thompson. Hits the inside corner. It's 3-1. Looked like Gannon almost wanted to swing at that one. His teammate Norris McClure did with a 3-0 count to end the first inning. Marhefke kicks and delivers a fastball that just misses low and away. And Gannon Thompson draws the leadoff walk. That is the 18th time this season that Thompson has walked. Strikes out just a bit more than he walks. Still has a 452 on base percentage. 
and it'll be Kenneth Dutka, the lefty out of El Paso Community College. He takes a fastball up and away. Good stop there by Keenan O'Brien. Dutka's 11-game hitting streak came to an end yesterday. Went 0 for 2. Did have a sack fly, though. He takes pitch number two from our half key. Grounds it to the left side. Bittner will toss it to Sitzman. The relay over to first. Not in time. A good stretch by Nolan Lingley. But Dutka able to run that one out. Bittner had to dive to his left to get it. He had a low toss to Sitzman, and the relay was just a bit hard for Sitzman, who got it out of his glove as quickly as it could. So just a 6-4 fielder's choice. Reaches Kenneth Dutka, and that was his problem yesterday, too. He did get on, but it was on. Well, he just walked yesterday. I thought it was him who had the fielder's choice. First pitch to Dane Frazier. He pops it into the back netting. It'll be Mitch Stone in starting today on in game one for the Sunfish. And from what I've been told, and if Walker Bullington decides to go with it in game two, it'll be Drew Ballou. Pitch misses low. It's one ball, one strike with one away. So there's still been no hits by either team. The Whiskey Jacks went three up, three down, while the Sunfish took advantage of two errors or by the Sunfish it was really Jonathan Brandon fastball runs low it's two balls one strike it cooled off quite a bit here in Grand Forks then yesterday yesterday's game at game time was 82 degrees it's currently 64 and I kid you not my phone says it's 64 and smoky not foggy not cloudy it's smoky Pitch runs in. It's three balls, one strike. Speaking of Smokey, well, both teams who were staying at the Sleep Inn this morning kind of had an encounter. That was quite interesting. I was there as well. There goes Dutka. The pitch misses low, and Frazier will walk. O'Brien will call time to go talk to his pitcher. But at the hotel today, it was roughly about, if I remember correctly, it was about 9.50 or 10 o'clock, something like that. Everyone was awoken to, well, an alarm. And in my room, I just thought it was one of the, either Adonis Fortes or Nick Cavilia, either their alarms and I was just going to let it play out, and then I realized this is really loud and it's continuing to go. Well, the fire alarm in the hotel went off. And there's a couple, the coaching staff for the Whiskey Jacks are in the hotel. I believe there's a couple of players as well. And while we were staying there, it was everyone was awoken this morning to the fire alarm. It was quite confusing. A fastball misses low to Carter Tibbetts. So when it says it's 64 and smoky outside, I kind of made a joke, it's coming from the hotel. It was nothing wrong. Someone just did something with the microwave during breakfast, so no one actually had to evacuate the hotel this morning. Second pitch to Tibbetts gets away from O'Brien to the backstop. Both runners will advance on the wild pitch, and it's two balls, no strikes to Tibbetts, and there's two runners in scoring position now with just one away in the top of the second inning. Tibbetts batting 258. Went one for three on Sunday in Pier. Had a walk, struck out twice. Ended his two-game hitless streak on Sunday in the 6-4 to four loss against the Trappers. And there is a slight haze kind of coming over the field right now. Sun is shining, though, from the sky. Tibbetts fouls one off. It's two balls, one strike. Still a sunny day. There is a breeze. And the flag out in center field. Blowing to the left. It's 
it's a definitely an improvement for the Sunfish who in pier had to suffer through 101 on Sunday. The pitch misses, the, or excuse me, hits the lower inside corner and it's an even 2-2 count to number two, Carter Tibbetts. One out, two runners in scoring position. Dane Frazier on second, Kenneth Dutka at third. It's already a one nothing ball game in favor of the Sunfish as Tibbetts pokes this one into right field. That's falling for a base hit. There goes Dutka. Frazier's just going to stop at third. The throw in from right gets cut off by Lingley, but it kind of rolled away into foul territory. Frazier still stayed put at third. He got the stop sign from third base coach Lane Hubdy. And Carter Tibbetts with an RBI single makes it a 2 0 ball game. The lefty Declan Beers, he's catching today, batting from the nine spot. Using the teal bat today. Matching more of the Whiskey Jacks uniforms than the Sunfish. Just a lighter blue. Here's the first pitch to him, up and away. It's one ball, no strikes. The Sunfish playing, wearing their all whites with the black hats, orange F or orange S, teal F with the teal brim. White uniforms with an orange left sleeve, teal right sleeve. White pants, black trim. Ball bounces in the dirt, stop by O'Brien. Carter Tibbetts stays put at first. The Whiskey Jacks on the other hand. White bottoms with black trim down the side. Light blue tops with dark blue sleeves, blue trim on the end of the sleeves. White numbers, white jacks across the chest. This pitch hits the outer part of the zone. It's two balls, one strike. Light blue hats with the Whiskey Jacks bird head on the front and a dark blue brim. In this game one of the doubleheader today. The 2-1 is lined into left field. That falls for a base hit. Dane Frazier scores easily from third, and Carter Tibbetts makes his way to second. It's 3-0 Sunfish in the top of the second inning. Back-to-back -back base hits brings us back to the top of the order for Jonathan Brandon. Brandon reached on that error in the first inning and scored on the ground out by Tanner Wilson. Coming into today's game was batting 224 after going 0 for 2 yesterday. Came in late to pinch run for JT Mix, who had a lower body injury. A fastball misses low to Jonathan Brandon. It's one ball, no strikes. Today marks the 15th straight day that the Sunfish have had a game. After game two of this doubleheader, they will have played 16 games in 15 days before having two days off on Wednesday and Thursday. A curveball misses low. It's 2-0. and You have to wonder if the exhaustion is going to start sinking in. I mean... By the time you've made it to 15 days, it doesn't seem like the Sunfish have actually gotten tired. If, in fact, it seems like the more they've played, the better they've gotten. They've won four of their last five. The two O's popped up. Shallow left field coming over is Bittner. He was getting close to the line before stopping. Had to come back over on his left side to make the catch for out number two. It's Tanner Wilson. Who again had that ground out in the first inning that would put the Sunfish ahead 1 0. And with the two hits this inning, Sunfish are now ahead by three. The wind has died down, the flag almost motionless out there, but you can see in the trees right behind it, there's still a slight breeze. First pitch to Wilson, a fastball at the knees for strike one. And I don't know if he's done this all season, but first base coach and pitching coach Tyler Olmstead for the Sunfish in the past couple games at least has, well, he's put on all of the Sunfish gear whenever they stop by first. If they take it off, he puts it on. 
Wilson rolls over one just past the hand of Cade Kalehu of Ahi in the third base dugout for the Sunfish. Third base coach Lane Hufty will have to go and chase after it as that one is fouled. Wilson behind, no balls, two strikes to Sam Marhefke in his second inning of work. Here's the 0 2. Bouncer in the left handed batter's box popped up. T Carter Tibbetts was sliding. He gets around the tag. He'll steal a base. That ball bounced in the left handed batter's box. It was knocked down by O'Brien, kept it in front of him, but Tibbetts thought it was enough for him to run over to third. Successfully, by, as he's now. At third, Declan Beers over at first. It's a one-two count. There goes Beers. Ground ball left side. That'll get through the hole. Beers is on his way to third. The throw in from Viano is going to be to Sitzman at second. A two-out base hit by Tanner Wilson on the hit and run. Scores Tibbets from third. And Beers goes all the way to third base, and there's still runners at the corners with two outs. Bittner was going for the backup on the steal, so he was playing closer to second base. And Wilson hit just right behind him. There he goes on the pitch. Zeph Hoffpower takes the fastball in at the knees. Tanner Wilson gets second base for free. Two outs, two runners in scoring position again for the Sunfish who have gotten out to a hotter start than they did in last night's game. The 0-1 to Hoffpower. He rolls over this one. Almost drills Kenneth, or excuse me, Declan Beers, who was running down the third base line. Declan had to jump out of the way of that one. That was such a sharply hit ground ball. It rolled all the way to the 330 down the left field line. 330 to the two corners here at Kraft Field. 410 to dead center. 375 to the alleyways. Marhefke deals the 0-2. Bouncer in the left-handed batter's box. Again, another nice knockdown by Keenan O'Brien. The only two that have gotten by him were pitches that were way wild, and he just didn't have a play on. He's been looking good behind the dish today. And aside from the error by McKee and the error by O'Brien, the Whiskey Jacks defense hasn't look, been looking all too bad. A pop fly in the right field. Easy work for Houston Fogelstrom for out number three. But the Sunfish put up three more off three hits. No errors here in the top of the second inning. It's 4 nothing Sunfish. Back on the Sunfish Radio Network and the Whiskey Jacks live stream on YouTube. Mitch Stone out for his second inning of work. Went three up, three down the first time up. His slider drops in for a strike on the inside corner to Owen Viano. Stone quickly working. Another slider swung on and missed this time at the ankles. Viano's behind. No balls, two strikes. Viano batting 333 
on the season. Went three for five yesterday, scoring twice. A breaking ball misses away. Declan Beers trying to get the appeal on a check swing. He's not granted it. Didn't look like Viano really took the bat off his shoulder. Here's the one, two. Got him with the fastball. Blown by him. Viano swings and misses for strikeout number one. Stone's 45th strikeout, still third in the Expedition League. It's been a while since he pitched last. So usually when he's done with his outings, he's the leader in strikeouts in the Expedition League for a little bit. And then he takes a little bit to get back on the bump. A fastball misses up and in, Nolan Lingley. The 1-0 from Stone, slider fouled off into the hands of Robbie Laughlin, who stumbled around with it at first before turning around and tossing it to Jesus Lee Cohn in the Sunfish dugout. Stone hasn't pitched since June 29th against the Spearfish Sasquatch. Here's the 1-1, a fastball right down the middle, swung on and missed by Lingley, who's now behind one ball, two strikes. Lingley out of Tracy, California. Went one for three against the Casper Horseheads as it's a drop third strike on the swing. Declan Beers will toss it to Zeph Hoffbauer for out number two. Back-to-back -back strikeouts for Stone. Standing next, number 36, 26, Dylan McKee. <clears throat> Dylan McKee batting 262 on the season out of Phoenix College from Phoenix, Arizona. Last played on Saturday where he went one for four in the Whiskey Jacks win against the Horseheads. Grounds the first pitch he sees over to Dane Frazier. Frazier up and firing. A bit high of a throw, but Hoffpower can come down with it. Three up, three down, back-to-back -back innings with a pair of strikeouts for Mitch Stone. After two innings from Kraft Field, it's the Whiskey Jacks zero, the Sunfish four. It'll be Norris McClure, Gannon Thompson, and Kenneth Dutka to kick off the top of the third inning. The home plate umpire is having a few words with Walker Bullington in the dugout. Not sure what that was all about. Bullington kind of put his arms up as is to why, why are you even talking to me? Not sure what that was about. Of course, this press box here at Craft Field, soundproof. Can't hear much that's happening out there. Breaking ball hits the outside corner to Norris McClure. He's behind 0-1. McClure swung on a 3-0 pitch to ground out to first his last time up. Marhefke delivers a fastball that's fouled off to the backstop. The Sunfish lead by four after back-to-back -back innings of scoring. They only scored one in the first off of a pair of errors by the Whiskey Jacks before putting up three runs off three hits last inning. The 0-2 popped up center field. Coming in is Daigle. Going out a bit was Bittner, but it'll be Daigle who will make the catch with Owen Viano running behind him for backup. Gannon Thompson, who walked 
and was put out on a fielder's choice his last time up. Almost had a four-pitch walk. Took a fastball at the knees for the only strike. Marhafke kicks and delivers. Brushes back Thompson with the fastball. Sunfish and the Whiskey Jacks only game happening right now. The next game to kick off will be the Sabre Dogs and the Badlands Big Sticks at 6.05 from Dakota Community Bank and Trust Ballpark. The 1-0, a breaking ball right across the plate. No swing by Thompson. It's an even 1-1 count. Today marks the 10th meeting between the two teams. Game two will be the 11th. The change up gets Thompson to swing. It's one ball, two strikes. And it's been crazy all season because, well, these two teams have gotten to know each other quite well. But even the Sunfish have gotten to know some of the Whiskey Jacks coaches as well. The one two, Thompson lays off a fastball. It's a two two. Because the pitching coach for the Wheat City Whiskey Jacks, Mark Reardens, is actually the assistant coach at Ren Lake College in Illinois for another, none other than Walker Bullington, the Sunfish skipper. So here's the two two. Breaking ball, chopped on to third base. McKee plays it off the second hop over to Lingley for out number two. Kenneth Dutka, who reached on a fielder's choice and scored in the second inning, gets his second crack at Sam Marhefke. But Reardon's before the game, spends a lot of time over by the Sunfish dugout, and I couldn't tell you two people who are almost exactly the same as Reardon's and Walker Bullington. Breaking ball swung on and missed by Dutka. He's behind, no balls, one strikes. They just have the same goofy personality, and you can tell why they mesh so weather or so well together. Kind of just blended well and together there, made weather. Fastball misses away. It's one ball, one strike. But they work so well together at Ren Lake. Go Warriors, as Walker would say. Here's the 1-1. One, one. Fastball fouled out of play, and Duck goes down to his last strike. But in fact, both teams were kind of <laughs> goofing around today. Reardon's was throwing BP for Wheat City. And Walker put on a helmet, grabbed a bat, and tried taking some swings of, of his own. A grounder over to Sitzman. We'll make it a three-up, three-down inning for the Sunfish. Their first inning today, they don't score on the 4-3 ground out by Dutka. They still lead by four as we head to the bottom of the third inning. Houston Fogelstrom, Keenan O'Brien, and Cameron Daigle, the 7-8-9 hitters 
for the Wheat City Whiskey Jacks due up here in the bottom of the third inning. Mitch Stone has been a man on a mission. He drops in a slider. It's no balls, one strike. Vogelstrom batting 274 on the season. Struck out 34 times. The breaking ball bounces in the left-handed batter's box. It's a 1-1 count. Well, Fogelstrom had quite an appearance in the doubleheader from Carroll, Iowa. A fastball misses outside. It's now 2-1. He went 1-for-3 in Game 1. And in Game 2, went 3-for-3 three three with two home runs, the second being a grand slam. Slider drops in on a bit of an awkward swing by Fogelstrom. I think the slider fooled him. It's two balls and two strikes. Here's the pitch. A slider fouled off just off the end of the bat. It was coming in around the ankles. A good defensive swing there by Fogelstrom. But since that series against Sioux Falls, there's only been two games that he has not gotten a hit in. And as a fastball runs in, and it hits Fogelstrom. There was a lot of zip behind that one, and it looked like Stone was just trying to throw as hard as he could and just lost a bit of control on that one. Next, nine, so a hit by pitch. Gets the first base runner on for the Whiskey Jacks. And it'll be Keenan O'Brien this time around. O'Brien on Sunday against the Horseheads went one for four with an RBI and a walk. Fastball right down the middle is taken for a strike. There's also O'Brien, though, in his only game against the Sunfish from Carroll, having a day. Three for four with a run scored and an RBI. Slider just misses off the plate. It's an even 1-1 one -one count. 283 on the season out of Broomfield, Colorado. O'Brien catching today. Here's the 1-1. One -one. Popped up, right field. Thompson going to his right. O'Brien tosses the bat angrily as Thompson will make the catch for out number one. And Cameron Daigle, the number nine hitter out of Louisiana, LSU Alexandria. He came in to pinch run yesterday and would score late in that ninth inning. It was the three RBI double off the bat of Dean Bittner. Runner goes, line straight into the glove of Norris McClure at short. And it, Fogelstrom will be doubled up. A hit and run gone awry makes it an unofficial three up, three down inning on the 6-3 double play. It's 4 nothing after three innings on the Sunfish Radio Network and the Whiskey Jacks live stream. Sunfish 4, Whiskey Jacks 0. We want to give a shout-out to the fans. Whiskey Jacks Radio Network and the The 7-8-9 for the Sunfish. Here in the fourth inning, Frazier, Tibbetts, and Beers. Frazier takes the first pitch and lines it into center field, falling for a base hit. 
That's his first of the day as he walked his last time up. And it's the third time out of these four innings that the leadoff man has been aboard. The only time it was Norris McClure flying out for that three up, three down third inning. Carter Tibbetts is now up. The wind has picked up again here in Grand Forks, blowing straight out to center field. Tibbetts singled, had a stolen base, and scored on the Tanner Wilson ground ball. Pickoff attempt at first, a late dive by Frazier. He comes up, his helmet was coming down over his eyes. Tyler Olmstead protected on the left elbow with Frazier's elbow guard. First pitch to Tibbetts is popped up. That's going out of play. Cloudy day here in Grand Forks, similar to yesterday. A bit more sun, though, as we're playing earlier. Not sure if Grand Forks, they were supposed to get a little bit of rain last night. If they did, I slept straight through it. Marhafke still on the mound for the Whiskey Jacks. The fastball goes high. It's a 1-1 count. Marhefke's longest outing of the season came back against the Sunfish on June 19th where he went five, or excuse me, correction, it was his previous one, seven innings. His second longest was that five innings against Sioux Falls. Currently in his third longest inning of work. In inning number four, he throws a changeup that's fouled off by Tibbetts, who's now behind one ball, two strikes. It doesn't look like anyone's up in either bullpen for the either team. The one two to Tibbetts is rolled over down the third base line. That's going to be foul. So a runner on first, no outs. The Sunfish lead 4 0 in game one of today's doubleheader. Marhefke sets and delivers. Runner goes, swing and a miss, low and away. The throw down to second. Sitzman came running across from second base. His foot, I think, touched second at one point as if it was going to be a force out, but no strike him out, throw him out today as Frazier gets a stolen base. Tibbetts goes down swinging for strikeout number one for Sam Marhefke. And it'll now be Declan Beers who singled and was left stranded on third his last time up. Beers is caught looking for strike one. And I've already said on the broadcast today the Sunfish have won four of their last five and in that five game stand. They're batting 287. Breaking ball misses away. It's ones across the board. 287. Most successful out of the bunch, Tanner Wilson, who came into today's game batting 538 in that stand. They've scored 44 runs. Scoring another 55 in the five games prior to as Beers takes another ball off the plate. So it was really last night's game and the game on Sunday against Pier that actually brought the efficiency of the offense down a bit. As Beers fouls one off, it's an even 2-2 count. In the 10, er, including the five games before the most recent five, so in the last 10 games, the Sunfish batting 289, but it was just in this last eight, five games that they're only batting 287, scoring 11 less runs in a five-game stand. Here's the 2-2. Liner straight at Dean Bittner, who makes the catch. Ethan Sitzman wasn't there to be covering to try and double up Frazier, so there's just two away. Whiskey Jacks were looking to duplicate what the Sunfish did to them the last time up. Frazier was playing a bit closer to second. So 
So no double play opportunity really. We're back to the top of the order with Jonathan Brandon. Curve ball misses low. It's one ball, no strikes. Elite drop on that one. So after having a six and a half hour drive to Grand Forks from Pier yesterday, the Sunfish have another long trek ahead after today's doubleheader, but luckily they have two good days off after this one. A pitch bounces in front of home plate into the glove of O'Brien for ball two. Sunfish haven't had many days off. Again, playing 15 straight days now. Having two of their days off taken up by games. Breaking ball drops in and a swing and a miss by Jonathan Brandon makes it a 2-1 count. Runner in scoring position in Dane Frazier. Sunfish are leading by four early on in this game one of the doubleheader. The wind picking up. Here's the 2-1, a fastball up and in. It's 3-1. Of course, the first day off taken for the Sunfish was occupied by a game against the Fremont Moo, a rain delay makeup, which... It was quite silly that that had to happen anyway as that game really meant nothing in terms of first half standings as the Western Nebraska Pioneers had already taken the first half crown. Here's the 3-1. Swung on and missed by Brandon on the changeup again. It's a full count. And of course yesterday was supposed to be another day off before a three game series in Spearfish. Instead it's just a two-day series with three games. The payoff is lined sharply into center field. Going back is Daigle. He'll make the catch about five feet in front of the warning track. A runner's left stranded at second. Off one hit, no runs, no errors. The Sunfish still lead by four as we head to the bottom of the fourth. Mitch Stone has been rolling through the Whiskey Jacks. Faced the minimum amount of batters. It was Houston Fogelstrom who's been the only runner on. He was hit by a fastball inside. And we'll be back to the top of the order with Ethan Sitzman taking a slider in the left-handed batter's box low for a ball. Fogelstrom would be doubled up on a line out by Cameron Daigle on a failed hit and run attempt. Another breaking ball bounces off home plate. It's two balls, no strikes to Sitzman. He goes with the fastball this time. It's popped up to right center field. Tanner Wilson comes over to make the catch for out number one. Sitzman flew out to right his first time up, this time to right center. Stone likes to heavily rely on the slider. Go with the one-two punch of the slider fastball with the occasional change up to a lefty. It's Dean Bittner who grounded out his first time up. He takes a fastball right down the middle. 
Stone. Usually whenever he shakes off a sign, he's shaking off a fastball. This time throws the heater low and away. I think I've maybe seen him throw the changeup about twice. He hasn't faced all too many lefties. If he had pitched against, who was that, Spearfish it was, as the slider misses low and away, it's two balls, one strike. Spearfish, over half their lineup was lefties, so he'd be throwing the changeup all the time. Fastballs popped up. Shallow left field coming in as Dutka. Who'll make the catch for out number two? Again, my depth perception from down here at field level is not the greatest. And when that was popped up, it didn't look like it was going to leave the infield all too much as Norris McClure was starting to drift back. But instead, Dutka actually made that about halfway between the infield dirt and the dirt of the warning track. Jake Jelly, who flew out his first time up, takes a slider in. Snowballs one strike. Jelly last night, of course, having all the success against the Sunfish. Takes a slider that just misses away. Two for three with a double. Two walks. Here's the 1-1. One, one. Breaking ball away. It's 2-1. Jelly with the best batting average on the team. has Also comes into today after the double yesterday with a 543 slugging. Fastball misses low and away. Jelly's got quite the eye too. 14 walks on the season. I'd like to see how many of those were against Sioux Falls. He walks this time. On a fastball high. Next, number 18, Owen and up until that batter, Stone had faced just the minimum amount. Well, now he's going to face his fourth batter here in the fourth inning, and unless he gets Jelly picked off, it looks like that streak's going to be ended. Slider drops in at the knees. It's no balls, one strike. Viano, his last time up, was the first strikeout of the game for Stone. Hasn't been relying on the punch out all too much today. A fastball up and in makes it a 1 1 count. It was Viano again yesterday, going three for five. As a fastball is blown by Viano, it's one ball, two strikes. Runner at first, two outs, Sunfish still lead by four. Viano doesn't chase the slider away. It's twos across the board. <coughs> and that walk by Jelly only marks his sixth against the Sunfish, which actually it does lead as Viano swings out a slider low and away for strikeout number three on the day for Mitch Stone. Jelly is left on base. The Whiskey Jacks remain scoreless. It's 4 0 Sunfish after four. The Sunfish lead by four 
And it wasn't until the fourth inning yesterday that they would tie it up 3-3. Well, they took an early 4-0 lead, have kept the Whiskey Jacks scoreless through four innings. And at the top of five, it's Tanner Wilson. We'll take a breaking ball inside for ball one. Wilson, through the first two innings, went one for two with a single and a stolen base. And a three-up, three-down third inning. Well, he couldn't get an at-bat in the fourth. He takes a fastball for a strike. And it's now the fifth inning. He gets his third time around. Been a bit busy out in center field today. After a series in pier where, quite frankly, he didn't move all too much. The 1-1 is a fastball at the knees. For strike two. Mar Hefke out on the mound once again for the fifth inning. Once again, his longest outing, seven innings, as was in his most recent outing. A fastball gets Wilson looking at the knees. Tanner not all too happy with that one, shaking his head immediately as he walks back to the Sunfish dugout. Gives a bit of a left-handed handshake to Norris McClure on his way back in. That's strikeout number two for Marhefke. It'll be Zeph Offpower who's 0 for 2 on the day. Takes a breaking ball on the inside corner for strike one. Zeph, in the last five games... Well, batting 167 coming into today. Playing in just three out of the five. Lays off of a fastball low. It's one ball, one strike. Wind picking up again, blowing out to center. A fastball just below the knees. Good, like, good take there by Zeph. Mar Hefke's been enjoying that lower half of the zone all game. Has been throwing a lot in, a lot low. Not too many high. There's another change up at the knees, swung on and missed by Hoff Power. It seems like Mar Hefke's been switching it up quite a bit. Throwing a curveball here or there, relying heavily on the change up before attacking with the heater late in the count. Here's the 2-2. Two -two. That time, a breaking ball misses just high and away. It's a full count. And the Sunfish don't chase the high ones all too many times. It's those breaking balls low, potentially low and away, that they tend to swing at. Marhefke winds and delivers on the payoff. A fastball in. Half power draws the one-out walk. And Norris McClure, who's 0 for 2 on the day. With a ground out and a fly out. Looking to get his hit streak to continue. Off power off on the first pitch. Pitch high. Good throw down. O'Brien got him. It was almost a pitch out and quite possibly could have been called a pitch out. Hoffpower was off on the first pitch from Marhefke. And it was just a perfect pitch for O'Brien to pop up. Had a nice transfer, threw it down, and Hoffpower had no chance. Here's two away for Norris McClure laying off a fastball on outside. It's two balls, no strikes. And a, a nice seamless transition there from the Glove to the hand for O'Brien. During warm-ups on the throwdown, pitch misses up and away. It's 3-0 to McClure. But on the throwdown to second, O'Brien went to make the transfer, and, well, the ball slipped out and landed on the ground. He had to pick it up and throw it down. So he got that one out of the way during warm-ups, and it pays off as he gets off power. The 3-0 is a fastball right at the knees for strike one. And as aggressive as they are on the base paths, 
Well, you know the drill. The Sunfish lead the Expedition League and caught stealing. Another fastball is fouled off out of play on the left side. Wind really starting to pick up now, blowing out to the left. Off power marks the 50th time a Sunfish has been caught on the base pass. They also still lead in the Expedition League with 139 stolen bases. That was just coming into today. This one's lined sharply into the gap in right field. That's falling for a base hit. McClure is just going to stop at first, taking a soft round. And he gets his first hit of the day with two outs. Well, McClure's hitting streak now extended to one, two, three, four, five, six. And in that six game hitting streak, two of them have been for extra base hits, including yesterday where he went two for four. Thompson takes a fastball for a strike. He walked and grounded out his two times up. Four runs off five hits for the Sunfish in today's game. No runs, no hits, two errors for the Whiskey Jacks. The 0-1, a fastball at the knees again. It's 0-2 to Thompson. Those are the pitches to be swinging at, and, well, you can't be picky this time of the season seeing fastballs at the knees thinking they're low. Rarely does Thompson see back-to-back -back heaters, especially in a place like that. And with the wind blowing out, this is the perfect conditions. There goes McClure, throw low and in, away. And that goes into center field again. McClure's on his way to third. That's the second error of the game for Keenan O'Brien on almost an exact same situation. The E2 <coughs> sends Norris McClure over to third base. He gets the stolen base and the E2. So now a runner 90 feet away with two outs for Gannon Thompson. One ball, two strikes from Marhefke. A swing and a miss on a breaking ball low and away. Held on to by O'Brien. And the Sunfish don't score on the punch out for Gannon Thompson. No runs off one hit, one error. No one left on base for Sioux Falls. They still lead by four. Nolan Lingley, Dylan McKee, and Houston Fogelstrom will lead things off for the Weed City Whiskey Jacks who are, remain scoreless here in the bottom of the fifth inning. A fastball low from Mitch Stone who's in his fifth inning of work. And Stone's been quite efficient today too. Throws a slider low and away. Good hold there by Lingley. The 2-0, a fastball on the outside corner, makes it two balls and one strike. 
Not too many pitches thrown for Stone, and he's quick in his work. Drops a breaking ball in there that's popped up down the first base line. Zeff Hoffbauer will catch it right where the dirt meets the grass. Well, if you just kind of come into foul territory from there, that's where he caught it for out number one. Langley 0 for 2 now on the day, and that brings up Dylan McKee for his second time around. Grounded out to third. A fastball goes by the glove of Declan Beers for ball one. It just misses away, and Beers had his glove like right underneath it. It didn't even get a piece. Breaking ball drops in just a bit high. Here's the 2-0 from Mitch. It's a fastball that drills him right in the head. Or at least I hope that wasn't the head. It was kind of up as McKee tried ducking out of the way, and I think that might have hit him either in the helmet or in the shoulder. I hope he's okay. He got it. He didn't fall down or anything. He tossed his bat quickly and, well, made his way down to first where he looks okay. That's the second hit batter of the day for Stone. It seems like... On a couple fastballs, he's just trying to throw hard. There's one in that's drilled off the bat straight over the left field wall. Stone just looked like he was trying to throw that one as hard as he could. He left it just a bit over the plate, more on the inside part. And Houston Fogelstrom, who had two home runs his last time against the Sunfish, makes it a one run or two run ball game with one swing of the bat. He got absolutely all of that one. There was no chance that that one was staying in. Kenneth Dutka turned as if to run, but kind of just looked as that one went. It's now 4-2. The Sunfish still lead off of the two-run homer by Houston Fogelstrom. Again, I mean, a fastball. It was just on the inside part of the plate. There's another fastball. First pitch grounded by Keenan O'Brien. McClure up and throwing. For out number two. And I. Houston Fogelstrom has one of the nicest swings I've seen this season. Comes quickly through the zone. And again, he took two home runs against the Sunfish, but they were both opposite field in Carroll, Iowa. One of them was helped out a bit by the wind, the other one is Grand Slam. There's no chance that was staying in the park, similar to this one off of Mitch Stone. When Stone's throwing upper 80s, lower 90s on the fastball, there's another fastball to Cameron Daigle who fouls it off. Stone looked like he was trying to throw that one as fast as he possibly could, so I wouldn't be surprised if that was hitting lower 90s. And, well, Fogelstrom just got his bat in there, had a nice, quick, powerful swing, and, again, no chance that one was staying in the park over the left field wall. This time, a slider drops low. It's one ball, one strike. So a second hit by pitch by Stone. Put Dylan McKee on, and the next pitch, a two-run homer. Fastball runs in. It's 2-1. and one. So the shutout is gone, and the no-hitter is gone on the same pitch. Fogelstrom's home run, the first hit of the day for the Whiskey Jacks. The 2-1. Fastball misses high. It's now three balls and one strike. Stone winds and delivers. A fastball just misses below the knees. Stone kind of put his hands up as where did that one miss? It just missed below the knees, a bit low. Declan Beer's coming out just to try and calm his pitcher. It's never fun giving up a two-run homer. And Stone looked like he got back into his rhythm, forcing a ground out to O'Brien on the first pitch. And he just seemed a bit out of it on that at-bat to Cameron Daigle. So we're back to the top of the order. Ethan Sitzman, who has flown out to right and center field his two times up, comes on with two outs and a runner on first. Slider in the zone for a strike. Seems this inning that Stone has been relying a bit more on the fastball. Goes back to the slider there. But the fastball once again high. It's 4-2. to two. 
A combined six hits, five for the Sunfish, one for the Whiskey Jacks. It's a slider check swing, but umpire says he went. It's one ball and two strikes. The Sunfish have been kept scoreless since the second inning where they scored three. And it's taken until the fifth inning of this seven inning game one of the doubleheader for the Whiskey Jacks to score. The one two, fastball in. Sitzman looked like he was trying, he was thinking about swinging, but instead just turned, not wanting to get hit. Stone again, not happy with that strike call. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. Runner on first, two run ball game. Stone kicks and delivers. Runner goes. Slider bounces off the plate. Beers up and throwing. It's a very low throw that has to roll into the glove of Jonathan Beers. Jonathan, Jonathan Brandon. It's Declan Beers and Jonathan Brandon. Combine their two names. It was Beers to Br Brandon. There we go. I talk too much sometimes. Three balls, two strikes to Sitzman. It's a stolen base for Daigle. The first of the day for the Whiskey Jacks. Here's the payoff from Stone. Slider called strike three right at the knees of Sitzman. Houston Fogelstrom breaks it open for the Whiskey Jacks with a two-run shot over the left field wall. It's now a two-run ball game. The Sunfish four, the Whiskey Jacks two as we head to the sixth. Houston Vogelstrom, who has had three home runs in the last two games against the Sunfish that he has appeared in, makes it just a two-run ball game with one swing of the bat. The first pitch he saw that inning against Mitch Stone, he absolutely crushed it over the left field wall. But it'll be Kenneth Dutka who leads things off here in the top of the sixth inning. He fouls off the first pitch he sees. Sam Marhefke back on the mound. And since the second inning, Marhefke's been looking pretty good. It doesn't help that he has a trio of errors behind him. Misses with a fastball outside. It's one ball, one strike. The Whiskey Jacks actually have the least amount of errors committed in the Expedition League. They came in with just 39. Well, now they have the second least. They committed three. Dutka falls off another one. Up to 42 errors, just behind the Spearfish Sasquatch, just a bit more than the Sewers Valley Saber Dogs. Sioux Falls has been climbing the ranks as of recent. They had two last night with 53 on the season. A fastball is called strike three on the inside corner. Dutka backed up off that one, thinking it was about to hit him, but a nice pitch dropped in there by. Sam Marhefke for strikeout number four on the day for him. And again, he hasn't allowed a run since that three-run second inning. And he's just only allowed five hits for the Sunfish. It's really been those errors that have been costly. Dane Frazier comes up, taking a fastball right down the middle. Frazier one for one with a single and a walk. Has also scored a run and stolen a base today. The 0 1 is lined sharply out of play off the end of the bat of Frazier. He knows he just missed that one.
Marhefke sets, winds and delivers. A fastball just missing low and away, and Keenan O'Brien thought that was going to be another punch out. Home plate umpire gives the acknowledgement to Marhefke and O'Brien saying, no, that missed just outside. Borderline pitch, I'd give it 50-50. A strike if it's called one, a ball if it's not. The one-two. Laid off again. That time it looked like the exact same pitch. This time it's called a strike. Frazier goes down looking. Three straight strikeouts going back to the bottom of the fifth inning when Gannon Thompson struck out to end it. It's Carter Tibbetts who struck out his last time up after singling and scoring his first time around. First pitch from Marhafke bounces on the inner chalk of the left-handed batter's box. Wind still blowing out strongly to left field. Here's the 1-0, up and in, it's 2-0. And that wind, trust me when I tell you this, that wind had nothing to do with Fogelstrom's home run. It might have affected maybe five feet if it flew any further than it did, but that was a no-doubter all the way. The 2-0 laid off by Tibbetts, but a changeup drops in at the knees for a strike. There have been some pretty hard-hit home runs, at least that I've witnessed this season. Fogelstrom has been two of them. His grand slam in Carroll, Iowa, and the one today. The 2-1 bounces again. It's 3-1. Will Olson, anytime he, I was even talking to him before the game. I was like, dude, anytime you hit a home run, it's just a no doubter. He kind of laughed in the Koreans. He leads the Sunfish in the long ball. The 3 1 grounded to the left side. Bittner to his right, comes up firing. It brings Longley off the base. He tries to swipe around for the tag, but Tibbetts evades it. And that'll be an E6 for Dean Bittner. The throw from Tibbetts, or excuse me, not Tibbetts. I was looking at the wrong place. The throw from Bittner. It had the arm, and it was a nice backhand by Bittner. Again, he was drifting to his right, pulling him away from first. Had to throw across his body. And it just pulled Lingley off the base. The fourth error committed by the Whiskey Jacks today. Declan Beers takes the first pitch he sees how to play. Two outs, runner at first. And again, you can hear above us, we're underneath the grandstand. You can hear the fans running for the foul ball, trying to get their souvenir. No balls, one strike to Declan Beers. Here's the pitch, swing and a miss on the breaking ball low. Beers singled his first time up. Lined out to Bittner his last time. Tibbetts with a moderate lead over at first. Here's the 0-2. Grounder, right side. Coming over is Sitzman. He fires over to first in time. The ground ball, a slow roller, brought Sitzman over to the first, and it made it easy work and an easy throw. No runs, no hits, one error, one left on base for the Sunfish. They still lead by two as we head to the bottom of the six.
Back from Craft Field in Grand Forks on the Sunfish Radio Network and the Whiskey Jacks live stream on YouTube. In the bottom of the sixth inning, the Sunfish still lead by two. It was back in the fifth when Houston Fogelstrom put the Whiskey Jacks on the board with a two-run home run. Also took away the shutout and the no-hitter for Wheat City. Or excuse me, for Mitch Stone, who's still on the mound. His first pitch is a fastball inside. It drills Dean Bittner in the back. And it seems like Stone's just really lost control on that fastball. He's trying, almost appears to be trying to throw it as hard as possible. That's his third hit batter of the game. Very out of character for, well, any Sunfish pitcher, let alone Mitch Stone. In fact, the Sunfish... Coming into today's game had the second least amount of hit batters in the Expedition League as a slider is left across the plate but fouled off by Jake Jelly. So Dean Bittner is just drilled in the back with the first fastball he sees. And now the tying run is at the plate in form of the power hitter Jake Jelly. Now the Sunfish are up to 35 hit batters on the season as a unit. Fastball misses low, it's 1-1. Game one being played right now. A slider that bounces in front of home plate is swung on by Jake Jelly. That never really came above his knees. A questionable swing by him there. It's one ball, two strikes. Game two of the doubleheader will begin roughly about a half hour after the conclusion of this game one. The one two swung on and missed. A slider drops. Jelly audibly Next displeased back. with himself. Olympiano. And that's strikeout number five on the day for Mitch Stone. One away here in the bottom of the sixth inning. The Saber Dogs and the Big Sticks are about to get underway. Otherwise, the Horseheads and the Sasquatch. Runner goes. The slider gets away from Declan Beers. A hard turn by Bittner around second. Now there's a runner in scoring position for the Whiskey Jacks. Bittner was off on the pitch. And then the ball got by Declan Beers, which just guaranteed him his safety at second. One ball, no strikes to Viano, who has struck out twice today. Fastball taken high to right field. Thompson at the warning track makes the catch. He'll throw it in. The tag by Bittner gets him safely all the way to third. Norris McClure having to chase down the ball. Stays in the infield. A long fly ball out to right field. Brings up Nolan Lingley. And again, another fastball left in across the plate. Mitch Stone having a few words with the field umpire. Not sure what that's about. And for Nolan Lingley, he'll take a slider low. Thompson looks like he's playing a few steps in front of the warning track now. I'm not sure if the wind is really just carrying this ball that far or they're just playing it safe. Tying run in the form of Lingley at the plate. Takes a fastball up and away. Sun's starting to poke out of the clouds now. Shining down and well it's coming in to the press box getting a little warm. Otherwise the wind blowing out there I can't imagine and it's nothing but chilly out there. The 2-0 a fastball popped up right field line going out as off power he tries to make the basket catch. He can't get a hold of it. He was coming out. Thompson didn't appear to be running in all too much. He was again playing deep, so it's a longer run for him. Also coming out was Jonathan Brandon. It'll just be two balls and one strike to Lingley. Casper Horseheads and Spearfish Sasquatch face off for their game one in Spearfish. Slider hits the inside corner. It's 2-2 with two away. 
the Mining City Tommyknockers and the Canyon County Spuds. It seems like they play each other almost every other series. They're live from Wolf Field at 7.05. And the Sodbusters and the Fremont Moo, another rivalry as Lingley fouls one off. They're live from Moeller Field in just a moment. It seems like three of the big rivalries, or at least the games that get played all the time, are the Sioux Falls Sunfish and the Pier Trappers, the Mining City Tommyknockers and the Cannon County Spuds, and the Hastings Sodbusters and Fremont Moo. The 2-2 is a fastball low. Another good take by Lingley. It's now a full count. The Sunfish and Trappers are done after 15 games. Here's the payoff from Stone. A grounder to third. Backing up is Frazier. He has got a long throw over to Hoffbauer, who makes the tag. He had to come off a little bit, but he recovers. A 5-3 to end this sixth inning. The Whiskey Jacks can't take advantage of a hit, by, hit batter to lead off the sixth. They go scoreless with no hits, no errors, one left on base. We head to the final inning of this game one of the doubleheader. The Sunfish still lead 4-2 to two over the Whiskey Jacks. Sam Marhefke's night is done. He goes six innings of six hits, four runs, three of them earned, three walks, and five strikeouts. He'll be replaced by Brandon Nix, the righty out of Omaha, Nebraska. Nix will start with the top of the order, the one, two, three, as he throws a fastball for a strike to Jonathan Brandon. Brandon got the scoring started for the Sunfish all the way back in the first, taking advantage of two errors to get him over the third. He would then score on a ground out by Tanner Wilson as a curveball slips out of the hand of Nix and misses high. It's 1-1. Nix with an even 9 ERA through 15 innings. This is 10th appearance on the season. 21 walks with 7 strikeouts. Pitch misses or hits at the knees. It's one ball, two strikes. Nix pitched against the Horseheads on Friday, going two innings, allowing five runs off three hits, two walks. Curveball inside has popped up down the first base line. Three are giving chase. Nix makes the slide into the fence in front of the Whiskey Jacks dugout. He slid feet first. Couldn't make the catch. Hopefully his feet are okay. He's smiling as he's walking back. That's just a foul ball. And landed inside Wheat City's dugout. Lingley was coming in from first. O'Brien from behind the plate. Nix ultimately was the one who put his body on the line. 
Here's the one two. Change up outside, it's two two. So once again, this is the final inning of game one of today's doubleheader. The Sunfish are leading by two. After the conclusion of this game, it'll be about a half hour and we'll return on both the Sunfish Radio Network and the Whiskey Jacks live stream for the final game of the season between the Whiskey Jacks and the Sunfish. A pitch misses low and Jonathan Brandon has fought to a full count. And maybe I shouldn't say the final game between the Whiskey Jacks and the Sunfish as Brandon lines a fastball in the left field. That's a base hit. His first base hit of the day. And the leadoff man is aboard for the Sunfish. That's the first time since the fourth inning when Frazier got a leadoff hit himself. Sixth hit of the day for Sioux Falls. It'll be Tanner Wilson. When I say that I shouldn't say pick off attempt at first, then I shouldn't say that it's the last game because, well, in Carroll, Iowa, I said it was the last game between the two teams, and look where we are. Last week, finding out that there was a game. Wilson bunts. It lays down right in front of the plate. O'Brien's up and firing, and a sack bunt moves Wilson over, or excuse me, moves Brandon over to second. Wilson put that one down right in front of the plate as he points over to someone in the Whiskey Jacks dugout. Had a smile on his face, so I don't think it was any jeering. Zeph Hoff powers up with one out and a runner in scoring position. The pitch, a breaking ball bounces off home. Jonathan Brandon was about halfway between second and third. He decides to take the half that goes back to second. O'Brien was looking at him. J. Bo leads the Sunfish with caught stealing, so not wanna, not wanting to test his luck as the Sunfish haven't scored since the second inning and only lead by two. The 1-0. -oh. Curveball inside, just missing the inside corner. Hoffbauer looked like he came out of that one holding his breath, hoping it was going to go in favor of him. It does. Two balls, no strikes. Sun fully peeking through the clouds now. Drenching the field in light as a fastball. Just below the knees is called ball three. Wind picking up sharply out to left field. Left center. That was the first home run. The one that Houston Fogelstrom hit in the fifth inning as a curveball bounces away. Jonathan Brandon's running into third to throw from O'Brien. Almost gets by a diving Dylan McKee. It was a curveball that bounced away from O'Brien, rolled up the third base line, gave him a bit of a chance to get Jonathan Brandon at third. The throw was low and a bit to the fair side of third base, made McKee have to dive. Almost was the third error of the game committed by O'Brien. Swing and a miss by Norris McClure. Puts him behind 0-1. Runners at the corners, one out, top of the seventh inning. Sunfish have not scored since the second inning. Curveball taken for a ball by McClure. He wanted to take swing at that one. He's got a really good eye at the plate. Doesn't chase too many bad pitches, and even if he does, he usually is able to make a bit of a contact with them. The 1-1. One -one. Pops this one up, just got underneath the fastball. Giving chase is McKee. He's going to watch that one go out of play. One ball, two strikes, one out, runners at the corners. Fogelstrom's playing pretty deep in right field. Again, depth perception. He could easily be playing about halfway between the dirt and the warning track as McClure fouls one off. 
No, there's no way. Even with my depth perception, he's definitely playing just in front of the warning track. McClure's got some power. He hasn't had a home run since his first week with the Sunfish. Homered twice against the Pier Trappers. The 1 2. This one's taken high and deep to right field. Going back at the warning track is Daigle. He'll make the catch. A long sack fly for Norris McClure. He just missed that one. McClure knew that that one was either getting caught or that he absolutely crushed it, and he just missed it. Either way, he does his job as Jonathan Brandon scores from third. It's now 5-2 to two Sunfish with two outs in the top of the seventh. Fastball just missing away. It's one ball, no strikes. I thought I had used my broadcasting powers for good there, or at least good for Sunfish fans, as McClure almost took that one over the right center field wall. Curveball bounces low. It's two balls, no strikes. Last week against the Spearfish Sasquatch, I was head. Well, the batter, Gannon Thompson, right now, he was up in the press box with me. And we kind of called Kenneth Dutka's grand slam. Another curveball misses away, and Thompson's ahead. Three balls, no strikes. Off power at first. The 3 0 fastball inside. It's called a strike. Five runs off six hits for the Sunfish. Two runs off one hit. Four errors for the Whiskey Jacks. The 3 1. Breaking ball drops in, and Thompson swings just over it. It's three balls and two strikes now. Off power will be off on the pitch. Brandon Nix has been looking pretty good, getting good command of the strike zone, forcing balls into play. Here's the payoff. Curveball taken by Thompson. He doesn't get fooled again. Struck out on a curveball of similar nature back in the fifth inning off of Sam Marhefke. This time he draws the walk. Kenneth Dutka, the lefty, struck out looking in the top of the sixth. He's got two runners on with two outs in the seventh. Takes the first pitch he sees high to left center field, giving chases. Daigle, that's going to fall. Zeff Hoffpower is going to score. Dutka trots into second. Here comes Thompson, the throw home, not in time. A two-out double for Kenneth Dutka. Puts two more on the board for the Sunfish. It's now a 7-2 game. He took the first pitch he saw deep to left center field. That looked like that went up against the wall. It's now 7-2 Sunfish with two outs in the top of the seventh. Some late insurance giving Mitch Stone some room when he returns to the mound. And I'm saying Mitch Stone because I have not seen anybody up and throwing in the Sunfish bullpen. The first pitch to Dane Frazier is a fastball away. So a walk, or a single, a walk, a sack fly, another walk, and a double have put three on the board for the Sunfish. A fastball right down the middle evens the count back up at one. Dutka gets his first hit of the day. He's hit in 12 out of his last 13 games. A 1-1, one, one, swung on and missed. It's 1-2. Another good fastball there by Brandon Nix. Nick sets, checks back at second, kicks and delivers. Thought he painted the outside corner with that one, but it just misses low. It's two balls, two strikes. It's 
Two outs, runner on second. Sunfish now lead by five after the double by Kenneth Dutka. Time is called as Nix was taking a bit too much for the liking of Dane Frazier. Here's the pitch. Swung on. Drilled into the gap in right center. Coming over is Fogelstrom. He'll make the catch in front of Daigle. Kenneth Dutka doubles to score two. And a long sack fly scores Jonathan Brandon. Three runs cross for the Sunfish. They lead by five now as we head to the bottom of the seventh frame. I stand corrected, it'll be Andrew Garcia who's in for the Sunfish, relieving Mitch Stone, who had a heck of a day. Aside from just the one mistake where he left the fastball just a bit too over the plate for Houston Fogelstrom, Stone goes six innings, allowing just two runs off the one hit, the home run. He struck out five, and he walked two, but he hit three. Those his just few mistakes. The Sunfish score three in the top of the seventh to give Andrew Garcia a bit of cushion to come in and close this one out. He'll lead off against Dylan McKee with a fastball in. It was here at Kraft Field that Garcia had probably his best outing of the season. Went seven innings, retired 16 straight. A fastball's fouled off into the back grandstand. It's 1-1. Shut out the Whiskey Jacks through seven. On the way to the first ever Sunfish win in franchise history, a fastball hits the inside corner. It's one ball, two strikes. Garcia usually one to throw low 90s, high 80s. Switches it up with a curveball, slow roller to McClure. He throws over to first, off power, which the stretch, his toe came off. An umpire says he's safe as his foot came off. And Houston Fogelstrom will now have another runner on, just like his last time. They're giving that one an error. And he's six to Norris McClure. Now an opportunity for a double play ball. Garcia, like his counterpart Mitch Stone, relies heavily on the strikeout. Throws a heater low. This is the first time this season that Garcia has not started in a pitching appearance. Liner in the left field. That's going to be a base hit. That was sharply hit off the bat of Fogelstrom. Man, he's got a nice swing and he can hit it hard. Usually you can't hear a ball being hit 
through what is basically soundproof glass right in front of us, but you can hear the crack of the bat on that one. Again, when you have a hard-throwing pitcher and a hard-hitting hitter, something's going to happen. It's Keenan O'Brien now who's 0 for 2. Garcia making his seventh appearance, his first not in a starting role. Fans won by Keenan O'Brien. With a 2.64 ERA through 34 innings, he struck out 36, only walking 22. He's 4 and 1 on the season. Curveball swung on and missed as it bounces off home plate. It's no balls, two strikes. Sunfish lead by five in this final inning of game one of this doubleheader. Again, two seven-inning games today between the Whiskey Jacks and the Sunfish. Garcia sets, checks back at second, kicks and delivers, fastball up. Good take by O'Brien. In the top of the third, the Sabre Dogs and Big Sticks are scoreless. And in the bottom of the first, the Sodbusters couldn't score. The Fremont Moo getting their first appearances at the plate. Here's the one two. Another curve ball bounces in front of home plate. It's 2-2 now to Keenan O'Brien. The Sunfish currently sit half a game ahead of the Moo as the Moo did not play last night. After today, the Sunfish could potentially be a few more games ahead of Fremont heading into their two days off. The 2-2. Curve ball, check swing, he didn't go, gets away from Beers. Both runners advance. And now with no outs, the double play ball has been taken off the board, and O'Brien, as the appeal on the check swing is called no go, has fought back to a full count. I never really saw Andrew Garcia warming up in the Sunfish bullpen. Not saying he came in cold. He steps off. Just wants to reset, re-get the signs from his catcher beers. Here's the payoff from Garcia. Fastball blown by him. O'Brien goes down swinging. First strikeout number one for Garcia. It's Cameron Daigle, the nine hitter, who walked and stole a base his last time up. Seven runs off seven hits, one error for the Sunfish, while two runs, two hits, four errors for the Whiskey Jacks brought us to where we are in the bottom of the seventh. Garcia steps off again asking for the signs. Fastball in. Makes it a 1-0 count. A long fly ball will score McKee from third. Most likely advance Fogelstrom to third. Even if both of these guys score, it's still a three-run ball game. The 1-0. Misses up and in. Garcia has been missing in a lot. Been missing low as well. Usually has a nice command of the strike zone, and it might just be the fact that he's not, well, starting off a game. Has not come in for relief this season yet. The 2-0. Fastball's fouled off. Two balls, one strike to Cameron Daigle. Wind still blowing out to left center field. The 2 1. Fastball just missing low.
Three balls, one strike to Daigle. He's walked already one time today. Here's a pitch from Garcia. Fastball swung on and missed. There's no radar gun here at Kraft Field, but knowing Andrew Garcia, that one was about 90. This time Garcia has fought back to a full count. Here's the payoff. Fastball again, swung on and missed. Back-to-back -back strikeouts for Garcia. And the Whiskey Jacks are down to their last out. Back to the top of the order. Sitzman gets a bit of a talking to by Daigle, just asking what's he got. Sitzman is all too familiar with, the, with Garcia. He was a hitter in that game where the Garcia shut them out. Retired 16 straight, meaning he got Sitzman twice. A curveball bounces in front of the plate into the chest guard of Declan Beers for ball one. Jonathan Brandon at second and Norris McClure at shorter playing just on the edge of where the outfield grass meets the infield dirt. Here's the 1-0. Breaking ball misses just below the knees. It's 2-0. The 2-0 is a fastball inside, and Garcia has his first three-ball no-strike count. McKee and Fogelstrom, both in scoring position. McKee just 90 feet away on third with Fogelstrom on second. With the 3-0 to Sitzman, a fastball right down the middle, no swing. McKee kicked off the inning, reaching on an E6, a tough throw by Norris McClure. Pulled Zap Hoffpower off the base just slightly. And a single right after that by Fogelstrom. Got them on, a ground ball just over the glove of AG. Jonathan Brandon charging the throw over in time. The Sunfish take game one against the Whiskey Jacks, seven to two. Your winning pitcher, Mitch Stone. The losing pitcher, Sam Marhefke. Both of them go six innings of great baseball. It was just the Sunfish who took advantage of the four errors by the Whiskey Jacks. Your final line with final pitch being at 729, just underneath two hours here in game one. The Sunfish, seven runs off seven hits, one error, with the Wheat City Whiskey Jacks scoring two off of the same amount of hits, but four errors. It was the long ball by Houston Fogelstrom who put the Whiskey Jacks on the board. And man, was this a close one. It looked like the Sunfish might blow the lead. They were just leading by two. Mitch Stone just left the fastball out there, but it was the bats late in the game that would pull it away. Seven to two, your final score in game one. We will return in about just about a half hour, half hour, 40 minutes. When we return for game two of this doubleheader, the Sunfish improve to five and one to kick off the second half of the season while the Wheat City Whiskey Jacks fall to two and three, losing their second straight. Once again, the Sunfish wins seven runs off seven hits, one error, while the Whiskey Jacks score two off of two hits, four errors. The Sunfish again improved to five and one, while the Wheat City Whiskey Jacks fall to two and three. They are now a game and a half behind the Badlands Big Sticks. We'll return about a half hour, 45 minutes on the Sioux Falls Sunfish Radio Network and the Whiskey Jacks live stream on YouTube. This is David Coyer. We'll see you for game two in just a moment.
Brandon. Uh, batting third, third baseman, number 37, Swamp Norris Swamp. McClure. Batting fourth, the, the catcher, number 35, okay. Will oh. Olson. And we're back on the air for this game two of the doubleheader. It's the Sioux Falls Sunfish and the Wheat City Whiskey Jacks from Craftfield in Grand Forks, North Dakota. Hello once again, Whiskey Jacks and Sunfish fans. It's David Coyer bringing you game two and this what should be the final game between the Whiskey Jacks and the Sunfish on the season. And the Sunfish have now tied up the series at five games to five on the season with back-to-back -back wins last night and game one of today they improved to five and one with the win earlier a two-game win streak after dropping Sundays to the Trappers while the Wheat City Whiskey Jacks after having started the second half of the season two and one have now lost back to back to the Sunfish and have fallen to two and three. A quick update from those games that had started a bit earlier. The Sewers Valley Sabre Dogs in the top of the fifth lead the Badlands Big Sticks one nothing. While in the top of the second now from Spearfish it's 0-0 in the top of the second between the Sasquatch and the Horseheads and in the bottom of the third inning from Fremont, the Moo and the Sodbusters all knotted up at one apiece. On the mound for the Wheat City Whiskey Jacks, it's Jake Anderson. Anderson, well, he's not a stranger to this Sunfish team. Neither are most of the Whiskey Jacks. As it's game 11 and the first pitch is underway at 8.02 from Craft Field, a ball that went bouncing to the backstop. 8.02 first pitch to Cade Kalei Huavehi. But Jake Anderson in his sixth start of the season throws a fastball that's driven high to left field. Kalei Huavehi flips the bat. That's gone. There it is. Cade Kalei Huavehi gets his first long ball of the season. He flipped the bat. He knew that one was gone once he hit it. A fastball right down the middle. And the Sunfish are on the board right away. Cade Kalehu of A.E. gets his first home run. He gets to hear the words, there it is. He's greeted at the dugout by all of his teammates. He takes the second pitch of the ball game over the left field wall. And the Sunfish are immediately up 1-0. Jonathan Brandon playing in his, well, technically third straight game against Wheat City. He came in for an injured JT Mix last night and now starting in both games of this doubleheader sees a ball, sees another one on a fastball up and in. We are now settling down. My heart rate is going down as I could barely see where that one was going. The umpire again blocking my view typically in that left center field area. The 2-0 curveball dropping in. Jonathan Brandon goes. The umpire said yes he did and Jonathan Brandon who was trying to play it off as if he checked his swing nodded in agreement. Two pitches into the game, Cade Kalehu of Ahe takes a ball over the left field wall for a solo home run. A strike hits the lower outside corner. It's 2-2 now to Jonathan Brandon. So the Sunfish are up 1-0 as a fastball right down the middle gets looked at by Jonathan Brandon from Jake Anderson. I don't know what he was looking at. That one looked pretty good to me. One out here in the top of the first inning in game two of this doubleheader. The Sunfish took game one 7-2 after taking game one of the series 9-7. to Norris McClure lines one up the middle past the glove of Jake Anderson. He takes the first pitch he sees, and the Sunfish bats are continuing after the first game. They had seven hits, and now they already have two. A home run from Cade Kalehu of Ahi and a single by Norris McClure. Will Olson, who leads the Sioux Falls Sunfish in the home run category. Takes a curveball inside. It's one ball, no strikes. 
And I was just getting to Jake Anderson's stats right before Cade hit that home run. He's 1-4 and four on the season through eight appearances, 6.55 ERA coming into the game. A swing and a miss on a curveball that bounces and gets away from Rhett Stein. We'll give Norris McClure second base. 23 in the third innings pitch, 20 strikeouts, 28 walks. Last pitched on Friday in a four-inning losing decision. Seven runs off seven hits, six walks, two strikeouts for Anderson. His last time against the Sunfish was game one of the doubleheader. He went just one and a third, allowing nine runs off three hits. This time a pitch misses low. It's two balls, one strike to Will Olson. So on the second pitch of the ball game, Cade Kalehu of Ahe hit his first home run of the season over the left field wall. He's leading off from the designated hitter spot. Jonathan Brandon struck out. Norris McClure's now at second after a single. Will Olson takes a fastball alone away. It's three balls, one strike. He'll be followed up by Zeph Hoffpower, Tanner Wilson, Gannon Thompson, Benito Garcia, and Adonis Forte to face off against Jake Anderson. Clay Huavehi, Brandon McClure, Olson, Hoffbauer, Wilson. Fastball is lined down the left field line. That's falling for a base hit. It's going to roll to the corner. McClure's rounding third, heading home. Olson's trotting into second base. The throw in from Fogelstrom, caught by Ethan Sitzman. And a one out double puts another run on the board for the Sunfish. They're up 2 0 early. Back-to-back -back games of scoring in the first inning. This time the Sunfish doing it all on their own. No help from the error. And it's 2-0 Sunfish off the double by Will Olson. Brings up Zeph Hoffpower. Again, Wilson, Thompson, Garcia, Forte after him. Zeph played in the last game. He'll take a change up outside. Zeph went 0 for 2, walking twice. He was caught stealing, but scored in the seventh inning. The 1 0, check swing. It bounced far in front of the left handed batter's box. It seems like Anderson's just trying to chuck it out there. He's had a couple bounce today. Two balls, no strikes to Hoff Power. Houston Fogelstrom, Cameron Daigle, and Dean Bittner from left to right in the outfield. Jackson Sorensen at the hot corner with Ethan Sitzman at short. Anderson kicks and delivers a pitch low. 3-0 to Hoffpower. And it's Garrett Olson at second with Jake Jelly, who was the designated hitter last game, over at first. Rhett Stein calling the signs behind the dish. Anderson sets. Checks back at second, kicks and delivers a fastball high. He walked him. A tough first inning for Anderson. He allowed a solo home run off the second pitch. Struck out Jonathan Brandon before allowing a single, a double, and a walk now. Red Stein's going to go out to talk to his pitcher. Both teams wearing their same uniforms as last. The Sunfish in their all whites with the black hats, orange F or orange S, I did the same thing last game. Orange S, teal F, teal brim on the black hats. All white unis, white pants with the black trim down the sides. White jerseys with the orange sun, teal fish, orange numbers underneath. Teal right sleeve, orange left. Tanner Wilson now up with two runners on and just one out. Anderson delivers a fastball that's fouled off by Tanner. The Whiskey Jacks, white pants with black trim down the sides. Light blue unis with dark blue sleeves that kind of come up to the shoulder. Jacks across the front in white lettering. Change up misses away. With white numbers on the front and back. Light blue hats with a dark blue brim. One ball, one strike, one out. Sunfish already lead 2-0 in the top of the first of this game two of the doubleheader. Anderson will check back at second before delivering as Wilson rolls over one. Sorensen to Olsen over to first, nowhere near in time. So just a 5-4 fielder's choice that gets off power. Will Olsen will stay at third. Tanner Wilson reaches on the fielder's choice. 
And that'll bring up Cannon Thompson, who went 0 for 2 last game, walked twice, scoring in the seventh inning. That three run seventh inning giving the Sunfish that insurance. They didn't end up needing it, but it was nice to have as Thompson takes a fastball high. So runners at the corners, two outs now. As the Sioux Falls native, Gannon Thompson. Digs in for his first at-bat, takes a fastball right at the knees down the middle for a strike. He had an at-bat last game where he took two fastballs at the knees before swinging at a curveball in the dirt. Right now, he's got the count even at 1-1. One and one. Thompson got his first home run of the season against the Whiskey Jacks in Carroll, Iowa. He doesn't bite on a breaking ball low. Mitch Stone had a nice outing on the mound for Sioux Falls, as did the Whiskey Jacks pitcher Sam Marhafke. Both pitchers went six innings. The 2-1... Another breaking ball, but it hits the zone this time. It's twos across the board. Marhefke went six innings, allowing three earned runs off six hits, three walks, five strikeouts. Well, Mitch Stone went six innings, allowing just two runs off of the solo home run by Houston Vogelstrom, walking two, hitting three, striking out five. A fastball runs up and in, and Gannon Thompson's got himself a full count. A very quick first game, just under two hours. Tanner Wilson goes, and Gannon Thompson takes a ball low for ball four. Second walk issued in the inning. The first was to Zaff Hoffpower, and it'll be Benito Garcia. He did not play game one of the doubleheader today. But last night, went one for four with a strikeout. Benito's kind of on this every other game deal. He takes a curveball low and in. A very similar lineup for both teams. It's Cade Kalehu of Ahi, Will Olson, and Benito Garcia with Adonis Forte. Those four who didn't play in game one earlier today. Base is loaded, fastball right at the knees to Garcia is taken for a strike. It's 1-1 with two outs. Two runs have already come off three hits and Garcia who has struggled all season with the bases loaded trying to at least take on a few more. Pitch misses high and away. It'll be the forkballer, Drew Ballou, who gets the nod for the Sioux Falls Sunfish. We'll see him in the bottom of the first inning. The 2-1 from Anderson. Garcia doesn't chase on a fastball high. Good take there as Benito likes to swing at some of those. But again, that's usually when he's behind in the count. He likes to look at a f at least one strike cross, typically, before swinging at another one. But here's the 3-1. This time, he chases the fastball high. Basically looked like it was going to be the exact same pitch. Couldn't lay off of this one. It's three balls and two strikes. Runners are going to be going. Third base coach Lane Hovde giving the sign. And with the payoff and two outs, why wouldn't they? Any base hit might score Tanner Wilson from Second, the runners go. The swing missed on a curveball. Second strikeout of the inning for Jake Anderson. But the Sunfish do their damage. Three, two runs cross off three hits. One of them being the Cade Clay who have a he solo shot, his first of the season. After a half inning, the Sunfish are up by two. We'll see how the Whiskey Jacks respond when we return.
It's the master of the fork ball, Drew Ballou, who comes in already with a two-run cushion via a solo home run by Cade Kalehu of Ahi and a single, or a double, excuse me, by Will Olson. Three were left stranded in that inning off three hits, no errors for the Sioux Falls Sunfish, and it'll be Drew Ballou, 2.95 ERA coming into today's game. This is his second start of the season. His first one came early on against the Pier Trappers. Drew has only pitched against Wheat City once. It was in four innings of relief in that 14-5 loss on June 1st. Seems like forever ago. Ethan Sitzman will be the first batter. Fastball hits right at the knees for strike one. Palou's last appearance came on Friday, going two and a third, allowing just one hit, two strikeouts, and eight batters face. Time is called. It's Sitzman, Dean Bittner, Caleb McDowell, Jake Jelly, Jackson Sorensen, Houston Fogelstrom, Rhett Stein, Garrett Olson, and Cameron Daigle. For the Weed City Whiskey Jacks in this game, two of the doubleheader. Fastball again at the knees. It's called a strike. Jake Jelly now is the only Whiskey Jack to have played in every single game against the Sunfish as McDowell did not play in game one today. Pitch misses up, up and away. It's one ball, two strikes. Drew has 24 strikeouts through 21 and a third innings pitched. It's only walked 10. The fork ball is fouled off. He likes to go to that a lot. Surprising. It's always funny when he brags about it. He always, he's always, whenever someone's hyping him up to someone else, it's like, did you tell him about the fork ball? And I love it, though. It's because you never really hear about people throwing it. Here's the one, two. This one's grounded to short. Benito Garcia plays it off the hop, fires it over to Hoffbauer for out number one. It'll be Dean Bittner and the defensive alignment for Sioux Falls is Adonis Forte, Tanner Wilson, and Gannon Thompson from left to right in the outfield. Norris McClure, Benito Garcia on the left side of the infield. Jonathan Brandon back at second base with Zeph Hoffpower remaining at first. It's the Augustana catcher Will Olson catching for his second time this series. Pitch misses high. It's one ball, no strikes to Bittner. Bittner has also played in all three games. He went 0 for 2 last game, getting hit by a pitch in the sixth inning. Fastball hits the outside corner for strike one. And the funny thing is, too, is everyone hypes up the fork ball, too, from Drew. He's always telling people about it. People give him a hard time for it, but then when he throws it, they support it. Baloo zips a fastball in there for strike two. One ball, two strikes, one out here in the bottom of the first inning. The Sunfish hold a two-run lead. Here's the pitch. Grounder to McClure at third. Plays it off the short hop over to first. A low throw dug out by off power in time for out number two. A low throw there by Norris McClure. Almost got away from off power. The Sunfish have kind of been on an error streak as of late. They just had the lone one the last game, but it was the four that proved costly for the Whiskey Jacks. Kind of a turnaround from the last series. Game one in Carroll, Iowa, the Sunfish had five. Appeal over down to first on the check swing by McDowell. He did not go. The breaking ball misses low and away. McDowell didn't play earlier today, but he did play last night. He takes a fastball away. Coming into today's game with a 3.02 after going one for four last night, scoring and drawing a walk. The 2-0, fastball right at the knees, and Drew's got this weird little release. And I can't remember, obviously, Last time I saw him here at Kraft Field, 
is back on June 2nd. I guess I wasn't paying as close of attention to it. Most of the time I'm seeing it from a high angle. The 2-1, fastball low and away. It's now 3-1. But he kind of short arms it. And when he follows through, he, he's got a nice little wrist flick is the best way to describe it. The 3-1, fastball got him at the knees. <laughs> Home plate umpire thought he rung him up. He has now said two strikes about three straight times because he did give a little punch out to Caleb McDowell. Thought he rung him up. Blue now sets for the payoff. Here it is. Fastball fouled to the backstop. McDowell currently on a six-game hitting streak. Started back on June 25th. Her correction, June 29th against the Western Nebraska Pioneers. The payoff again, and Ballou lost him on a fastball away. Just the 11th walk issued by Drew this season brings up Jake Jelly. Jelly in game one went 0 for 2, walking in the fourth. And now with a runner on, the Jelly could tie it up. With a long ball himself, it was Cade Clay of Ahi who had the homer in the first inning. We've seen two so far today. As a fork ball misses high. I haven't seen much of Drew's curveball yet. He's just got the three, fastball, curveball, fork. The 1-0. Fastball driven high and deep to center field. Going back is Wilson at the wall. He makes the catch on the backup. He was backing up, started backpedaling, caught it over his head as Ballou left a fastball over the plate for a hard-hitting Jake Jelly, but it wasn't enough. The 4-10 too deep to center field as the Whiskey Jacks go zero runs, no hits, no errors, one left on base after one full. In game two of the doubleheader, the Sunfish lead by two. We return to the Sioux Falls Sunfish Radio Network and the Whiskey Jacks live stream on YouTube. David Coyer bringing you all the action of today's doubleheader. Game two underway with the Sunfish leading by two after one inning. It's Adonis Forte for the Sunfish from the nine spot leading it off here in the bottom of the second inning. Jake Anderson misses outside for ball one. Anderson walked. Two in the first inning, allowing a home run off the second pitch of the game to Cade Kalehu of Ahi. Down his forte, half swing on a fastball at the knees. It's 1-1. Forte hasn't played since Sunday, where he went 0-3 against the Trappers in the 6-4 loss for the Sunfish. Did have an RBI off a sack fly, though. Takes a breaking ball high. It's two balls, one strike. Adonis, though, has a 474 on base percentage with a 534 slugging. So he, you know, maybe just had an off game on Sunday. Takes a pitch in, almost gets hit, actually. It's three balls, one strike. Here's the 3 1 from Anderson as he kicks and delivers. A fastball low, and Adonis draws the leadoff walk. That's his 17th walk on the season. 
Again, his on-base percentage up there in the ranks of the Sunfish. And it's, and it's Cade Kalehuavehi up to bat. And it's Adonis Forte at first. Cade, again, has only seen two pitches this game. The second one, he drove over the left field wall. He takes a fastball up. Three hits for the Sunfish through that first inning, only scoring two runs. We'll see if they can continue to add on to it. The 1-0 bounces in front of the left-handed batter's box and stopped by Rhett Stein. Adonis stays over at first. Adonis is tied for first in stolen bases on the team with 15. He's tied with JT Mix. Pickoff attempt, no tag by Jelly at first. Forte and Mix both have stole 15 times. Both have been caught three times. Here's the 2-0, fastball up. Cade is ahead three balls, no strikes. From Baldwin, Wailuka, Hawaii. The flying Hawaiian, as I've referred to him a couple times this season. Cade was batting 246 coming into the game, and that's a bit higher at the home run, and he also draws a walk here in the second inning. Back-to-back -back walks issued by Anderson. That's not the basement, number 31, Jonathan Brandon. It's Jonathan Brandon who struck out looking on a fastball right down Main Street his last time up. It's a bit chilly now as the sun has begun to go down. Game one was 64. Right now it's 60 degrees in Grand Forks. Slight breeze. Change up is called a strike. Gets Jonathan Brandon looking. It's one of the cooler games in more recent memory for Sioux Falls. On the 4th of July on Sunday, first pitch was 101 from Pierre, South Dakota. The 01 is swung on low by Jonathan Brandon. I think he got a piece of it. No balls, two strikes. Most of the games from Sioux Falls or other places traveled have been high 90s mid to high 90s. Anderson steps off as Adonis Forte at second had a bit of a lead. I was getting too uncomfortable for the pitcher. Anderson kicks and delivers. A fastball once again right down the middle taken by Jonathan Brandon. He's shaking his head on that one thinking that one was a bit low and away. Back-to-back -back strikeout looking for Jonathan Brandon, and it'll be Norris McClure with one out. Similar to how he was last time, but now he has two runners on. Anderson checks back at second. Forte hasn't shown any sign of going at all today. So McClure swings that one in the dirt. First base coach Tyler Olmstead has his South Dakota State Jackrabbits sweatshirt on over at first. Lane Hubdy at third, just in his uniform. The 0-1 gets Anderson to turn around to Forte once more. No one's covering. Sitzman's kind of been creeping, but Garrett Olson has been staying put at second base. Here comes Sitzman again, but now he's moving back. The 0-1 bounces in the dirt on the breaking ball. It's ones across the board. Tom Soon, the sunfish pitcher from last night, the relief. He's got some long sleeves on. I think Mitch Stroh has an Augustana hoodie on. The 1-1. One -one. Fastball grounded up the middle. Sitzman got a glove on it, but he couldn't get all of it. Forte's rounding third, heading home as Sitzman, I think, was just casually running to get it in the outfield. That'll be an infield single, a tough ball to get for Sitzman. And Forte using his speed, scoring all the way from second on the 
Well, I think he just caught Sitzman sleeping. McClure back-to-back -back singles. This time it's an RBI. It's 3-0 Sunfish. Will Olson doubled his first time up. He's got two runners on with one away. JT Mix all bundled up in the dugout as well. He's got a Florida State hoodie on as Will Olson takes a fastball just a bit high. Anderson checks in, gets the sign, kicks, and delivers. Check swing by Olsen as a curveball bounces in the dirt in front of Rhett Stein. He's going to ask for a new baseball, and it'll be granted one. Two balls, no strikes. And, well, Tyler Olmstead from South Dakota State over at first base, the first base coach, he's... Well, familiar with the University of North Dakota here at Grand Forks. The 2-0. Change up. Called a strike right down the mill. Craft Field, of course, used to be the home of UND baseball before that program was officially disbanded. UND, a part of the Summit League, featuring South Dakota State, North Dakota State. Fastball right at the knees of Will Olson. It's two balls, two strikes. UND, USD, Oral Roberts, Western Illinois, University of Omaha. Of course, Western Illinois, my alma mater. I always like to bring that up every once in a while. Here's the 2-2. Curveball, no chase by Olsen. There goes Kalei Huavehi and McClure. It gets away from Stein, rolled slowly back to the grass behind the dirt behind home, and it's 3-2 count now to Olsen. But Olmstead and his Jackrabbits, he just finished up his career at SDSU. Never played here at UND. Here's the payoff. Fastball taken high down the left field line, but hooking into the Sunfish bullpen. Olsen just ahead of that one, pulled it just a bit too much. A slight breeze blown out to center, but nothing that would carry his ball anywhere. And Olsen never needs it on any home run. It's always been a no-doubter. The 3-2 fouls it straight to the backstop. He's got his tongue out and kind of looked back at me. Not sure if that was on purpose or just his normal follow-through. Party made... Bit of eye contact with Dane Fraser in the Sunfish dugout and gave a little head nod. It's easier for the team to see me when I'm down at field level. Here's the payoff. Fastball high, he lost him. Base is loaded now for Zeph off power, who walked his last time up. Anderson's been struggling today. He's made it through an inning and a third. And if he, for some reason, gets pulled at this moment, which signs are showing that that's most likely not going to happen, it would tie his shortest outing. Both were, would be against the Sunfish. He throws a breaking ball inside. It hits the corner to Zeph Hoffpower. But it was in that 13-4 loss for the Whiskey Jacks. Then Anderson would give up only three earned runs off nine total. Hoffpower lays off one low. The 1-1, one, one, fastball high, taken for a ball. And it was in the second inning for the, in that game in Wheat City as Hoffpower whiffs on a fastball. It's 2-2. Two -two. It was in the bottom of the second inning where both the errors in that game would occur. Only four hits would score nine runs. And Anderson would be pulled. The 2-2. Two -two. Fastball inside. It's popped up. 
and pitching coach for the Wheat City Whiskey Jacks, Mark Reardens, goes up to try and make the catch. As I was going out of play, he did something similar yesterday where he knows it's going out and he just jokingly goes up to quote unquote make the play. Here's the 2 2 to Hoff Power. Gets him swinging on the breaking ball low. And there's two outs here in the top of the second inning. The center fielder, number eight, Tanner Wilson. That's strikeout number four for Anderson. Just one away from his season high of five, which came all the way back on June 4th against the Sodbusters. Anderson out of South Lake, Texas. Going face to face with another Texas boy, Tanner Wilson. A fastball misses high and the Bridge City, Texas native in Wilson gets the early 1-0 advantage. The bases are loaded with two outs in the top of the second. One run has already scored as Wilson gets a piece of a fastball, but it's hooking out of play. Donis Forte would draw the leadoff walk and it'd be on a single by Norris McClure right up the middle that Forte would take advantage of what appeared to be Ethan Sitzman not paying too much attention and score. The 1-1 bounces in front of the left-handed batter's box straight into the glove of Rhett Stein who in return fires it back at his pitcher. Two balls, one strike, two outs. Here's the pitch, fastball right down the middle. And the Sunfish, well, when they get early leads, it's tough for them to sometimes hold on to them. Wilson's at 2-2, two -two. he grounds one on fastball up the middle. Sitzman coming over. He'll take the out at second himself. The fastball, or the grounder up the middle was bringing him over to second anyway. He gets the six unassisted. One run, scores off, one hit, no errors, three left on base, back-to-back -back innings of the bases left loaded. The Sunfish lead 3-0 as we head to the bottom of the second inning. Drew Ballou kicks and delivers his first pitch. A fastball hitting the inside corner on the lefty Sorensen. And Jackson didn't play in game one of the doubleheader earlier today. 
Swings at a curveball in the dirt, shaking his head, knowing he chased something he probably shouldn't have. Sorensen on the season, batting 294. Went two for four last night with a double, a walk, and a strikeout. Fork ball gets him to swing. And that's strikeout number one on the day for Drew Ballou. Fielder, number 21, Houston, Bolstrom. Three pitches, three strikes. It's now Houston Fogelstrom. Fogelstrom had the only hit in game one today. Had two run blast to left field. It was just on a fastball on the inside part of the plate. Fogelstrom just turned on it and took it. The first pitch from Ballou is a fastball right down the middle, a bold choice. What have got him to swing and foul it off. Taking a quick look around the Expedition League as other games are starting to get underway. The Sabre Dogs and the Big Sticks are tied up in the bottom of the sixth inning. The 0 1 is. A curveball that smashes straight into the glass in front of us. And on a curveball that bounces in the dirt nonetheless, that makes the biggest pop out of any pitch this series that has hit this glass. Quite interesting. Now that I say it, we're bound to get a fastball that's just going to miss the glove entirely and hit us right in the glass, or even a foul ball that comes right in front of my face. Here's the 1-1. Fastball fouled straight to the backstop. And an ask, and ye shall receive, is that one... Just bounce low. Top of the fifth inning from Spearfish. The Sasquatch lead the Horseheads 1-0. While the Moo have pulled far and away from the Sodbusters in the bottom of the fourth inning, it's 8-1 Moo. The Tommyknockers and the Spuds are in pregame right now. One ball, two strikes to Fogelstrom. A fork ball is taken high and deep to right center field. Coming over is Wilson. Gannon Thompson from right. We'll call him off last second to make the catch. Wilson's hat fell off as he was sprinting from center. The catcher, Ols or Thompson Stein. caught that on the way down. It was a nice shoestring catch. It's now Rhett Stein, the catcher, off of a nice play by the Sunfish right fielder. A kick and deliver, a fastball. Just misses the outside corner. Not sure where that one missed. Stein, one of those players who also played in game one of the series but did not play in game one today. Ballou throws another fastball. This time it's low and away. Last night, Stein went 0 for 4. Had an RBI off of a long sack fly. He's got no one on to score right now. Even if he hits a sack fly, it would be an out anyway. Fastball drilled into right field. That's going to be a base hit. Just like that, he gets his first hit of the series with two outs in the bottom of the second inning. The Sunfish lead by three. They've scored in the first two innings. Second baseman, number 16, Garrett Olsen. Fairly similar to game one of this doubleheader. The Sunfish scored one run in the first inning, three in the second. In game two, they scored two in the first, one in the second. It'll be Garrett Olsen, who swings through a fastball and misses. Last night, when one for five, striking out three times. Sound base percentage fell 10 points with that. Here's the 0 1. Fastball again, swung on and missed. And Olsen from Lincoln, Nebraska, sporting a nice mustache. The Sunfish had quite a few nice stashes on their team. The only one left really now is Tanner Wilson. Raises his age about four years. He's 19, looks like he's about 25. 
I know that math doesn't add up. The ball low, throw down by Olsen, also low, but gotten out of the dirt by Jonathan Brandon on the backhand. He was having to run through that one. So a stolen base for Rhett Stein, puts a runner in scoring position for the Whiskey Jacks. Olsen is still behind. One ball, two strikes, and that time Garrett Olsen, not Will Olsen. The one, two. Fastball, got him looking right down the middle. Strikeout number two in the inning for Drew Ballou. No runs, score off, one hit, no errors, one left on base. Through two, it's the Sunfish three, Whiskey Jacks zero. It'll be the 7-8-9 for the Sunfish in the top of the third inning. Gannon Thompson, Benito Garcia, and Adonis Forte. Fastball high, makes it a 1-0 count. And with about 6.55 remaining in the first half of the NBA Finals Game 1, the Milwaukee Bucks trail the Phoenix Suns 45-38. Another pitch misses away. It's two balls, no strikes. Now, I was getting updates all day. Sunfish fans know I'm from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. And there it is. Giannis Antetokounmpo is playing tonight. There's a breaking ball hits the zone. It's two balls, one strike. So far, he's had 12 minutes, seven rebounds, three assists, eight points. Second in points behind Brooke Lopez with nine. Thompson drives this one into left center field in deep. Coming over is Fogelstrom for out number one. It was against Wheat City in Carroll, Iowa that Gannon Thompson had his first home run of the season. He didn't get his second one until last Monday against Fremont. It'll be Benito Garcia who struck out swinging his last time up. So the Bucks are trailing. They beat the Brooklyn Nets on their way to the Atlanta Hawks on their way to the NBA Finals. Breaking ball fools Benito Garcia. He doesn't swing, but he takes it for a strike. The Suns defeated the Clippers in the Western Conference Final to make it. Fastball at the knees. And this is quite the strange NBA Finals game. I think if you put money on it at the beginning of the season to say it will be Milwaukee Bucks versus the Phoenix Suns, to make it to the NBA Finals, I think you'd be a very rich person. The 0-2, fastball high and away, no chase by Garcia. It's one ball, two strikes. And I'm saying that, well, I'm not, I'm a Milwaukee fan. I'm not a big basketball guy. I'll, I'll watch March Madness, because March Madness is hype. I'm not a big fan of the NBA, but I'll root for the Bucks when they're good. Swing and a miss on the curveball low. Garcia goes down swinging two times in a row. Left fielder, number four, Adonis. It'll be Adonis Forte, who walked and scored his last time up. Yeah, the NBA just doesn't do it for me. But again, I'm from Milwaukee. have to support the hometown team, and 
I'll be the first in line saying I'm a bandwagon fan. Fastball misses just in. It's one ball, no strikes. Now the Bucks with 6.49 remaining, just trail by five. Another pitch misses low, it's 2-0. Oh. We'll keep you updated as that game goes on. The 2-0 to Adonis. Hits him. He tried getting out of the way. He was crowding the plate quite a bit. His toes basically on the inside chalk in the left-handed batter's box, and the curveball came in. Hit him right on the right hip. So a hit by pitch for Adonis Forte gets him on first in back-to-back -back innings, and with two outs, it's Cade Kalehuavehi. Two outs, runner on first. The Sunfish lead 3-0 here in the third inning. Cade lays off a fastball high. The standings for the most part in both divisions look fairly similar to how they ended in the first half. Of course, the Western Nebraska Pioneers taking the first half of the Clark Division while the fastball misses outside to Cade. He's ahead, two balls, no strikes. As Rhett Stein popped up and looked over at first at Adonis Forte. And then in the Lewis Division, it was the Sewers Valley Sabre Dogs who currently sit at 2-2 two and two on the season. They're tied with the big stick still. Curve ball drops in inside. It's three balls, no strikes. Correction. In the bottom of the sixth, the Badlands Big Sticks have now taken a two-run lead. The Big Sticks lead the Lewis Division with a 2-1 record. They're just half a game ahead of the Tommyknockers and the Sabre Dogs. Well, and the Whiskey Jacks, who also are at 2-2. Two two. Pitch misses in, and Kalei Huavehi draws the two-out walk. Jonathan Brandon. Jonathan Brandon, who has struck out looking two times, has two runners on with two outs. This would be a tough strikeout for him. Cade and Jonathan have had a plate appearance in all three innings now. The first pitch is a fastball just away. There's one ball, no strikes. So it's obviously it's still early on. This is just game seven, at least for the Sunfish in the first half. Last night, the rest of the Expedition League had the day off. JB takes a breaking ball across the plate for strike one. Most teams have only played about four games. Some of them just three in the set since the second half has begun. Fremont and Moo are just behind the Sunfish at three and one. Fastball misses away. It's two balls and one strike now to JB. Of course, that half a game behind is due to the Sunfish playing yesterday. And now it's a full game behind as the Sunfish are now 5-1. and one. The 2-1 and one is taken high and deep to right field. Going back is Bittner just at the warning track. He makes a catch for out number three. So no strikeout this time for Jabo. A hard hit ball to right field. No runs off no hits, no errors. Two left on base. For the Sioux Falls three, Sunfish, three, after the top of the third, the mm -hmm. Sunfish still lead by three when we return on the Sunfish Radio Network and the Weed City Whiskey Jacks live stream.
Cameron Daigle coming around for the first time. He's the only Whiskey Jack to not have an at-bat so far in the first two innings. He'll get his first chance here in the third, trailing by three to the Sunfish in game three of this three-game series, game two of today's doubleheader. Daigle went 0 for 2 with a walk and a stolen base in the earlier game today. He shows bunt, pulls back, but takes a fastball on the outside corner anyway for a strike. And what I was kind of getting at with that story about the standings and just kind of breaking down those standings before we cut to break, fork ball misses in. Again, side note, it's just so much fun to say a fork ball misses in or a fork ball called a strike. Probably one of the few times in my broadcasting career is going to be this summer is me saying fork ball misses such and such places as a fastball has popped up into center field. Coming in is Wilson. He'll camp underneath it for out number one. I can't imagine there's all too many broadcasters who get to say... There's a fork ball for strike one or blah, blah, blah. And especially from this angle, getting to watch it just from down here, field level, right behind home plate, get to see that movement. He's already holding it like it right now. I can only imagine it's about to be a fork ball right now. He just goes straight for it. Blue sets, delivers to Sitzman. No, that was just a curve ball. It's no balls, one strike. Sitzman grounded out back in the first inning. Well, for the Clark division, it's fairly close. The Sunfish are now 5-1. and one. The L1 a fastball high. It's now a 1-1 one, one count. The Moo just behind him at 3-1. and one, A full game behind, but they're ahead right now against the Sodbusters. Western Nebraska Pioneers are 2-1 and one, with Spearfish right behind them at 2-2. Two and two. The one and one, a swing and a miss on a curveball outside. It's one ball, two strikes. And the Trappers and Sodbusters are both one and three. The one win for the Trappers come against the Sunfish on Sunday. That was their 10th win of the season. Here's the one, two. Pitch misses low. It bounces in front of the plate. Good stop there by Will Olson, the catcher. It's a two, two count. The Sunfish, though, are done playing against the Trappers this season. Finished up their 15 games. They'll see the Western Nebraska Pioneers twice at the end of, this, of July. The 2-2 is a fastball fouled off. But that's the thing. Like It seems like the first half of the season may or may not have been the easier half for the Sunfish, and yet they finished two games under 500 to close out the first half. Played the Trappers 12 times. And no disrespect to these organizations, but the, some of the games were just games that the Sunfish should have won. Including game one of the series against Wheat City and Carroll. It was a costly error in the top of the ninth that gave the Whiskey Jacks that lead as Sitzman falls off another one. And then it was just a lack of hitting in game three of that series, game two of the doubleheader, that proved just to be a bit too much for the Sunfish as they couldn't put anything up offensively. But so teams that the Sunfish will see in the second half of the season as a 2-2 is grounded over to Norris McClure. Plays it up, fires it over for out number two. The right fielder for 25, Dean Bittner. It'll be Dean Bittner who grounded out to Norris McClure his first time up. So after this series against Wheat City, Sioux Falls will travel to Fremont. They play Fremont in the month of July. Let's see. Five, eight times in the month of July. And a total of ten times the rest of the season. So in the second half of the season, ten out of 32 games. It's almost a third. As a fork ball is flied up into left field. A basket catch is made by Adonis Forte on the run in, and it's a three up, three down inning for Drew Ballou. Through three innings, Through three innings the Sunfish three. lead by three over the Whiskey Jacks. And this, the final game of the series and potentially of the season between the two squads.
Jake Anderson's night is done. He allowed three runs today. One of them, a solo home run to Cade Kalehu of Ahi on the second pitch of the ball game. First pitch from the new man in, Matthew Dalquist, is a fastball for a strike on the inside corner. He goes for the breaking ball. Norris McClure does not chase. It's 1 1. McClure, 2 for 2 with singles today. Facing the righty as he fouls off a fastball that's far down the left field line into the Sunfish bullpen. Actually, if I'm not mistaken, I think that just cleared the wall. <laughs> Over, past the Sunfish bullpen. Nope, never mind. Someone's going to go pick it up. It was just at the wall. Here's the 1 2. Fastball, no chase by McClure outside. Jake Anderson finishes up today. Three innings, allowing three runs off four hits. Six walks, five strikeouts. Pitch up and in, makes it full. So the Sunfish taking advantage of the walk once more as a fastball is now skyrocketed to center field. Cameron Daigle has all the time in the world and makes the catch to his left for out number one. But Dalquist out of UC San Diego just finished up his freshman year, 5'10", 177 in his fourth appearance. He came to the Whiskey Jacks right after that Carroll, Iowa series. We'll now face Will Olson with a fastball just high. And it's pitchers like these where I wish we were at Karis Park in Sioux Falls. He goes for the heater again, low and away. It's two balls, no strikes. Because he's got some zip behind it. There was for that first pitch, I can tell you it was mid to high 80s, potentially even low 90s as he, wow. The break on that curveball just dropped it in there for strike one. Goes with the breaking stuff again, this time low and in. It's two balls, two strikes to Olsen. With Dalquis, two and one on the season through his three appearances, 8.37 ERA through nine and two thirds innings. Goes with the heater again, and Olsen chases it upstairs for out number two, strikeout number one for Dalquist. First baseman, number seven, Zeph Hoffpower. It'll be Zeph Hoffpower, who through the first two innings walked and struck out. We'll face Dalquist for the first time this season. Goes with a pitch right down the pipe for strike one. His last appearance came on Sunday. Got the win in two innings of no-hit baseball. Off power pops one up out of play, it's 0-2. Struck out three and six batters faced. So going six up, six down of perfect two innings and got the win. The 0-2, a curveball is lined into left field, that's falling for a base hit. Off power gets the two out single. Zeph, who went hitless in game one tonight and didn't play in game one of the series, gets his first hit since Sunday. Tanner Wilson takes his first pitch to right field, and that gets by a Dean Bittner who laid out. Hoffpower with his helmet almost falling off, is rounding third, heading home. The relay over to third is not going to be in time. Dean Bittner dove out, let the ball get by him. It was a tough play. Hoffpower scored all the way from first. The throw was relayed to Garrett Olson, who in turn took it over to third. And, well, I'm thinking that's a triple. We have to wait for the official scoring on point streak, but... In all intents and purposes, that's a triple. It'll be Gannon Thompson with two outs. A ball bounces by Red Stein. Here comes Wilson. Stein's not going to get to it in time. And on the wild pitch, Tanner Wilson scores. 
Two runs now in this top of the fourth inning. The Sunfish extend their lead to 5 0. The lights are on at Kraft Field. The sun beginning to set to our right. Here's the 1 0 to Gannon Thompson, who swings through a heater. Lane Hovde now having a long sleeve black shirt on in the third base coaching's box. The 1 1, fastball at the knees. Paint in the corners is Dalquist. And they are officially giving it a triple. That's Tanner Wilson's, if I'm not mistaken, second of the season. It is. Fastball high. It's a 2 2 count with two outs. Second triple of the year for Tanner Wilson. Scores Zeff off, power off it. Dalquist tries to go with a breaking ball. It bounces off home plate, and Thompson doesn't chase at this one. Three balls, two strikes. Here's the payoff. Another curveball. This time it falls just below the knees, but it's called strike three. Thompson goes down looking. Second strikeout of the inning for Dalquist. Seventh of the game for Trap, or excuse me, Wheat City Whiskey Jacks pitching. It's a triple by Tanner Wilson that scores off power. Wilson scores on the wild pitch. Two runs, score off two hits, no errors, no one left on base. It's 5 0 Sunfish from Kraft Field. Drew Ballou out for his fourth inning of work. He's now got a five-run cushion behind him. The DH, number 28, Caleb McDowell. Ballou's longest outing of the season is five innings. That came in relief against the Pier Trappers on June 7th. He'll lead off against Caleb McDowell. Throw a breaking ball away. It's one ball, no strikes. But the Sunfish scored two in the top of the fourth. So it's only been the third inning. They cannot cross one. Here's the 1-0. Fastball just misses the outside corner. An update for the Milwaukee Bucks and the Phoenix Suns at halftime. The Suns lead by 8, 57-49 in game one of the NBA Finals. The 2-0, fastball right down the middle, and McDowell loses his back. That goes all the way up the third base line towards the Sunfish dugout. Robbie Laughlin, third base coach and manager for the Whiskey Jacks, having to walk it back to his designated hitter. That one, you hate to see that. Luckily, it doesn't appear that anyone got hurt or was anywhere near getting hurt. Ballou sets and delivers. Strike up the knees, 2-2. Two -two. Game 11 between the two squads. Going all the way back to May. Second series of the season as a curveball drops in just at the ankles. McDowell doesn't chase, it's a full count. Lou hangs his arm before coming in. 
He brings his elbow kind of up before bringing the glove down, and he goes with the fastball, swung on just a bit early by McDowell. He fouls it off. It's still a full count. Blue, one of the few players on the team to wear his pants up to show black socks underneath. Will Olson, the catcher, does as well, and Norris McClure over at third. There's a few others on the team who do it as well. Some even wearing colored socks like Dylan Cricket Danielson. Here's the payoff. Fastball, high chopper over to third. McClure plays it off the second hop, fires it over to first in time. First baseman number 32, Jake Jelly. That's five straight retired for Ballou going back to the second inning. It'll be Jake Jelly who flew out his first time up in the first inning. And it was a long fly ball, too, dead center field. If it was at Karras Park, yeah, it might have been gone. 4-10 here to dead center in Grand Forks. First pitch, a fork ball down low. Swung on and missed by Jake Jelly. Wind slightly blowing out to left field. Actually, it's picking up now. Fastball right down the pipe. Jelly frustrated he didn't swing at that one. I think he was expecting the breaking stuff. No balls, two strikes now to the big man out of East Grand Forks, Minnesota. That's right, he's right down the road. Goes to the University of Minnesota Crookston. Breaking stuff just misses. I'm going to say that was outside. Not exactly sure where that one missed. Will Olson doesn't question it, or if he does, he doesn't turn around to ask. One ball, two strikes. Ballou sets, kicks, and fires. He loses that one. Takes his hat off in frustration. It's a 2-2 count. Olson, the catcher for the Sunfish, familiar with Jelly. They are in the same conference, Northern Sun Intercollegiate Conference. A fastball is swung on and missed by Jelly. He's vocally frustrated with that one. Third That's strikeout number three on the day for Drew Ballou. Ballou's season high in strikeouts. Came against Wheat City on June 1st. He had eight. On the season, he's now up to 27. That'll bring up the lefty, Jackson Sorensen. He takes a breaking ball low. The Whiskey Jacks have just been held to one hit. Two if you go back to game one of this doubleheader. And the only hit in the first game was the two-run home run by Houston Fogelstrom. The 1-0, fastball coming in at the knees. It's called a strike. The wind really picking up, and I can only imagine how much colder that's feeling. It's down to 59 here in Grand Forks. I'm assuming with the wind, it's probably something about like 56, the 1-1. A breaking ball was left out there. It's fouled down the first base line, just past the bare hand of the first base coach. One ball, two strikes with two away here in the bottom of the fourth inning. The one, two from Ballou. Here it is. Fork ball driven straight into center field. Wilson's going to have to let up on that one. It's a two out base hit. Ballou takes his hat off and squats in front of the mound. He knows he left that one out there. He was hoping for a swing and a miss. Still got a smile on his face. I don't know if I've ever seen Drew Ballou without a smile on his face. Well, currently right now, I guess he doesn't have one. He's trying to be a bit serious when he's pitching, but a hit, he could give up a go-ahead grand slam, and I think he still would somehow have a smile on his face or get right through it. It's... Houston Fogelstrom on the curve ball that bounces in front of the plate. Fogelstrom's ahead, one ball, no strike. He flew out to Tanner Wilson in center. The 
Blue doesn't have as much zip as Mitch Stone, so if he leaves a fastball out there for Fogelstrom, it might be a bit harder to power this one over the wall. There's a fastball right there, but it misses away, no swing. And it was Drew Ballou and Zeph off power who kind of had the bet. Drew is topped out at 88 this season at Karras Park. And while he, his buddy Zeph Hoffpower came in to pitch as a position player as the fastballs fouled back into the grandstand. It's two balls, one strike. But it was Drew who placed a bet saying, hey, Zeph, you, if you can throw or match 88, it was like a dollar or something, maybe. Actually, I'm not even sure if there's anything on it. It might have just been kind of a, a gentleman's bet. Two balls, one strike, runner goes. Fastball whiffed on high, the throw down. He's going to be called out for hitter interference. Houston Fogelstrom bent over into the throwing path of Will Olson. It'll be batter's interference on Fogelstrom. Sorensen is called out. And it's an unofficial three up, three down inning. One hit, no runs, no errors, no one left on base. After four from game two at Kraft Field, the Sunfish lead by five over the Whiskey Jacks. Benito Garcia. Benito Garcia will lead things off. He's 0 for 2 with strikeouts today. He takes the first pitch, fouls it off the end of the bat down the first base line. Tyler Olmstead was backing up, but he's now he gets the foul ball and tosses it to the dugout. It looked like a Wheat City guy had gotten it first. Garcia can be a little streaky as the season goes on. He Tries to check his swing, but goes after a curveball in the dirt. From Matthew Dahlquist, who's in his second inning of work. Dahlquist allowed a single and a triple, and both runs crossed, making it a 5 nothing ball game. The fastball right down the middle is popped up by Garcia. Well, that's going to drift out of play. Benito has gotten a hit in his last two games after going 0 for 5 against Spearfish. He had been on a bit of a hitting streak before that, and he rolls over a curveball that goes straight into the hands of Lane Hovde at third. He'd had a seven-game hitting streak before going 0 for 5 against Spearfish. He'd had a long run early on in the season where he couldn't get a hit against Pier in that long-standing 12 games in June. Takes this pitch high to shallow center going back is Olsen. He's gonna make the catch over his shoulder as he's running back for out number one. The left, field, left fielder number four, Adonis Forte. Adonis Forte, who has technically not had an at bat yet today. Walked and scored in the second, was hit by a pitch the last time. Fastball at the knees is called a strike. The 0-1 as Dahlquist is quick with his work. Almost hits Garcia again on the fastball in. 
And again, Forte's back left foot as he rolls over a fastball straight into the glove of Jelly, who takes it himself at first. But Donis' back foot is basically on the back end of the batter's box, but his toe is on the back corner. Both of his toes are on the inside, inside chalk. And so, you know, he's basically almost getting hit every single time. But if we're back to the top of the order, to Cade Kalehuavehi. He takes a curveball low for ball one. Cade's reached all three times today. Had his solo home run on the second pitch of the ball game. And then walked twice. Pops this one up. Coming in is Sorensen coming over is Dahlquist. Sorensen going to call him off, make the catch in fair territory about seven feet up the third baseline. Three up, three down for the first time today for the Sunfish. Garcia Forte and Clay Huavehi all retired in order. Five nothing as it's, well, technically stretching time from Kraft Field as we head to the bottom of the fifth in this seven inning game two of a doubleheader. It's always a tough one to score when you have a batter's interference. I haven't had it happen in quite a while, and I'm not 100% familiar, or I don't recollect the what the rule is technically. Fork ball just misses high. It's one ball, no strikes. Technically, Houston Fogelstrom is the one who's out on that, not the runner going to second, Jackson Sorensen. So we're leading off with Rhett Stein here in the bottom of the fifth as a fastball hits the zone for strike one just on the outside corner. It was quite confusing. I wasn't 100% sure how it was going to be scored. And well, we get it answered for us as Rhett Stein's the first one leading off. He takes a fastball up and in. Just confusing there. Not something that happens in every game when you have a batter's interference. Drew Ballou in his fifth inning of work. If he makes it through this one, we'll have tied his longest outing. Throws a fastball, hits the outside corner again. It's 2-2. Taking a trip once more around the Expedition League. Every game is underway. The Badlands Big Sticks have pulled far ahead of the Sears Valley Sabredogs. They lead 9-2 in the bottom of the eighth. Curveball dropped in, swung on and missed by Stein. He goes down for the fourth strikeout for Drew Ballou. The second baseman, number 16, Garrett Olsen. It'll be Garrett Olsen who struck out all the way back in the second inning. Drew Ballou has been, as I like to say, wheeling and dealing on the mound. He's allowed only two hits through four and a third. Here's the first pitch, fastball high to Olsen. In Spearfish, the Horseheads have tied it up in the seventh inning from Black Hills Energy Stadium. It's 3-3 in the top of the seventh. 
While in the bottom of the first, the Canyon County Spuds have struck first against the Tommyknockers. It's 2-0. Breaking ball bounces in the left-handed batter's box, comes right towards us, and it's ball two. You can tell when Baloo's frustrated. He always reaches for his cap and takes it off. And the Sodbusters have come back just a little bit in the bottom of the sixth inning from historic Moeller Field in Fremont. It's the Moo 8, the Sodbusters 6. Baloo steps off. So once again, Big Sticks lead the Sabre Dogs 9-2. Sasquatch and Horseheads are all knotted up at 3, while the Tommyknockers trail the Spuds early 2-0 with the Moo leading the Sodbusters by two, eight to six from Muller. The 2-0, fastball in, it's a strike, 2-1. And I know it's the question on everyone's minds, how are the Milwaukee Bucks doing? It's okay, I'll tell you, don't worry. 9.37 in the third quarter remaining, 65-52 Suns. The 2-1, fastball low, swung on and missed, it's 2-2. Just last week in his last start, general manager Nick Moen and I on a breaking ball outside. It's a full count. Nick Moen and I were talking about Drew Ballou. And again, I've mentioned it today how he's the nicest guy you will meet. Always got a smile on his face. Always the funny guy in the dugout. Master of the fork ball, the 3-2, fastball grounded over to Garcia at short. Charging in, on the run, makes the throw in time. Two outs in the bottom of the fifth inning. The center, field, center fielder. It's Cameron six. Daigle. Cameron Daigle. But the thing about Drew Ballou, well, he's from Wailuka, Hawaii. And if you saw him, you would not think he's from Hawaii. Big muscular guy. You know, he's got a bit of a tan. And as Nick Moen would kind of describe him, he looks like an Alabama boy. Well, his dad is from Alabama. Fastball is fouled back into Will Olson. It rolls away a bit. It's no balls, one strike to Daigle. In fact, Ballou sports an Alabama Crimson Tide sweatshirt on occasion. Whenever it's cool, it hasn't been cool enough in recent memory. Roll Tide. But so yeah, he's he's quite the character. I think the funniest thing though is that he was gonna go to Skyline College out in California. Would have been teammates with former Sunfish pitcher Asante Wilson. Here's the 0-1 from Baloo. Breaking ball just misses high. And well, he is now since committed to going to Pensacola State in Florida just so he can play with his buddy Zeph Hoffpower, who's on the Sunfish. <laughs> that breaking ball got, got Daigle to chase. I'm sorry that I laugh. It's just, man, that's a, a bit of a bend to it. And Daigle just had a half swing. You could tell he didn't want to follow through on it. One ball, two strikes. Here's the pitch from Ballou. Fastball away. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. Due up for the Sunfish, the 2-3-4, Brandon McLaren Olsen. Here's the 2-2. Breaking ball, got him. Outside corner, got Daigle looking. The second strikeout of the inning. Fifth of the day, three out, three down for Baloo. It's Brandon. McClure and Olsen do up in the top of the sixth inning. The Sunfish lead by five.
Jonathan Brandon leads things off in the sixth inning. He's 0 for 3. Hasn't had an at-bat since the third inning. Time is called. Red Stein will head out to Matthew Dahlquist, who's in his third inning of work. Tyler Olmstead late to the party, tr trotting all the way over to his first base coaching's box. A long bus ride ahead for the Sunfish after this one. Yesterday, they drove six and a half hours to Grand Forks from Pier, South Dakota before playing in last night's game with a 7.05 first pitch. Fastball misses below the knees. It's ball one. Tonight, another long drive. Back to Sioux Falls before two days off for the rest of the week. The 1-0 swung on and missed. Another fastball. From what I've been told, Drew Ballou's night is done after five innings of allowing just two hits. A fastball misses low. It's 2-1. and one. And from what I can tell out in the bullpen, that might be our, I'm 90... 8% sure that's Austin Oblas. Breaking ball hits the outside corner. It's 2-2 two and two to Jonathan Brandon. Doesn't chase on the one that bounces in front of the plate. Good eye by Jabo. It's a full count. Jonathan Brandon and... Zeph Offpower were the two guests on the fish tank as he grounds one over to first. Jelly will toss it to Dahlquist running over for out number one. The third baseman, number 37, Norris McClure. It'll be Norris McClure, who's two for three on the day. Another Louisiana boy, but I had the other two on the fish tank last week. Zeph off power, Jonathan Brandon on the official podcast of the Sioux Falls Sunfish. Had a good time. I'm still not sure who I'm having on the, on the cast tomorrow as McClure fouls one off. Well, it's the first time I'm admitting that out loud to anyone. and well, It's been just such a long road trip and such a hectic weekend. As the curveball falls in at the knees to McClure called a strike. So if you have any suggestions, text them my way. If you have my number or tweet at David Coyer, go hashtag fish tank as McClure files one off. Whiskey Jack fans, if you want to get in on the action too, do the same thing. I know many of you probably don't listen to the fish tank. As McClure gets brushed back by a fastball in, it's one ball, two strikes. Looking over now to the Whiskey Jacks dugout, and Zoe Hicks has a Seattle Kraken sweatshirt on. As McClure pops up underneath one, but that's going down the left field line, giving chase and sliding is Sorensen. He can't come up with it. It's still one ball, two strikes. And well, Hicks from Manitoba, Canada. Her dad's a hockey coach. It's not surprising me that she's wearing a hockey sweatshirt. There's a good chance it might not even be hers, so I'm not even going to, you know, go into it really as McClure takes a fastball for strike three. Got him looking. A lot of strikeout lookings today for the Sioux Falls Sunfish. In fact, that's number four with a backwards K. And that's strikeout number three on the day for Dahlquist. It brings up Will Olson. The Seattle Kraken, the newest expansion franchise in the NHL. As the first pitch sails over the glove of Rhett Stein, he gets a piece of it, though, but it's still ball one. The NHL expansion draft coming this summer. And the Kraken will play their first games next season. Curveball drops in just at the ankles. It's 2-0. The Kraken, when they had their name released, their logo, 
all that's basically their brand when they made that whole release last summer. So fastballs fouled just above us in the press box. A liner back. It's two balls, one strike. Zeph Hoffbauer comes over and rolls it over to the Whiskey Jacks dugout. I thought it was a cool name. Thought it was a cool logo, cool color scheme, cool uniforms. And the de just the description behind it is amazing as Olsen rolls over one. That gets away from Sorensen. It's going to roll down the left field line. Olsen on his way to second. That's going to be an E5. And Olsen slides in, benefiting, well, from an unofficial double on the E5. The first A hard hit ball seven. over to Sorensen, oh. but he could have gotten the backhand. He's backhanding the air right now, knowing that he should have gotten that one. And it should have been another three up, three down. That ends the streak of six in a row retired by Dahlquist. Now there's a runner in scoring position for Zeph Hoffpower, who singled and scored in the fourth with two outs. Dahlquist steps on, looks in, gets the sign from Stein, sets, checks back at second, and delivers. Swing and a miss on a curveball by Hoffpower. You can tell he's not too happy with himself at that one. Suttonfish still lead by five. That's the first error of this game for the Whiskey Jacks. They had four last game. The 0-1, a fastball high. The Stanley Cup playoffs. Going to game five tomorrow, Stanley Cup final between the Canadians and the Tampa Bay Lightning. A swing and a miss on a fastball by his half power brings the count to one and two with two outs. The Lightning hold a three to one lead in the series. Went for the sweep last night, but couldn't pull it out. Here's the one two, fastball high. Olsen wanted to swing at that one. He brought his arms up. But he held off. It's two balls, two strikes with two outs. Here's the 2-2. Two -two. Curve ball dropping in, hits the dirt. It's a full count. Here's the payoff. Popped up. Right side coming in is Dahlquist. And there is Mark Reardon's as we hear the thud right above us in the stands. Reardon's was nowhere close. He gets a few chuckles from the people in the dugout. It's still a full count. That was pitched 34 for Dahlquist through two and two-thirds innings. Sixth of the at-bat. Here's pitch number seven, a fastball high. He lost him. So what should have been a three-up, three-down inning turned into an E5 that put Will Olson on second, and now Zeph Hoffpower draws the walk after afterwards. And it's Tanner Wilson who tripled his last time up. Five nothing Sunfish. Wilson sees the first pitch he oh falls off, excuse me, the first pitch he sees for a strike. No balls, one strike to Wilson. Here's the pitch from Dahlquist. Fastball right down the pipe. It's 0-2. And fans, I'm being told by Walker Bullington that uh, I have to honor a, an agreement I made before the game. I made an agreement before the game that with two hits of shutout baseball that Drew Ballou could do the post-game interview as Wilson fouls one off, and that's going out of play. Jelly has to stop at the fence. And now... This isn't going to hold up because there was no fine print and I didn't specify this. I was under the impression that we were saying a complete game 
two-hit shutout. Drew Ballou could do the post-game interview, not just in his appearance. Well, Walker texts me, and he said, two hits, shutout. He's doing the postgame. Wilson takes a fastball into right center field. That's dropping quickly, coming over his Daigle. He dives. He can't make the catch. One run's going to score. Here comes Hoffpower barreling around third. The tag in time. Will Olsen will score. Tanner Wilson got in there. It's now 6 nothing Sunfish as Zeph Hoffpower got a bit too aggressive on that one. So one run crosses. It's 6 nothing Sunfish as we head to the bottom of the sixth inning from Kraft Field. Ethan Sitzman will be the first man that Austin Oblast will face in the bottom of the first sixth top, inning. The Sunfish scored one more in the top of the six. It's now six nothing. It'll be Austin Oblas on the mound for the Sioux Falls Sunfish relieving Drew Ballou. Ballou went five innings pitch, two hits, no runs. One walk, five strikeouts. He's usually 12 on point streak. Tonight he's rocking number 16 as the first pitch is fouled off of Ethan Sitzman. That's right, he fouled it into himself. He's going to walk it off a little bit. Home plate umpire going to brush off a clean plate just to give Sitzman some time. That one that almost went so fast off of Sitzman's leg that it went straight back into the field of play. Oblas 6'5 from Gunter, Texas. University of Texas, Rio Grande Valley. He's got an 0-1 on Sitzman. Throws a breaking ball, it's the outside corner, it's 0-2. This is eighth appearance. Tying Andrew Garcia, who made his, or excuse me, Mitch Stone, who made his eighth appearance earlier today. 
Two and one on the season, 2.76 ERA. Goes for the breaking stuff again outside. It misses one, two. 13 innings pitch, struck out 16, walked 10. His last time he came in and pitched three innings of relief, got the loss against Spearfish. Fastball is fouled high down the right field line. Thompson giving chase. That's looking like it's staying fair. It is. That rolls straight to the corner. Sitzman's going to trot into second with a double. A uh, frozen rope from the arm of Gannon Thompson from the corner. Oh, my goodness, though. A leadoff double. Gets the Whiskey Jacks tugout going. That's just the third hit of the ball game, first since the fourth inning. It's been the even innings that the Whiskey Jacks have really gotten things going. A single in the second, a three up, three down in the third, a single in the fourth, three up, three down in the fifth, and a double now in the sixth. Brings up Dean Bittner, who's 0 for 2. Fastball at the knees, called a ball. So Oblas coming in, relieving the fork ball, throwing Drew Ballou. And again, I was kind of mentioning in the top half of this inning that I may have to fulfill a promise to Drew. You might see him on Sunfish Twitter, two balls, no strikes. It wasn't unless he got one hit shutout that I said he could get some color commentary. And if he went no hitter and a shutout, there's a pop-up, goes out of play. It's two balls, one strike to Bittner. If he threw a no hitter, I said he could do a full game of color commentary and do the post-game interview. He didn't do that. So no color commentary for Drew, at least in the coming time. Jonathan Brandon goes over to second to hold back Sitzman. He doesn't budge. Fastball is now drilled high and deep to right field. Thompson, though, it's right at him this time. Sitzman will tag. Thompson, the throw from right. It bounces in, but it's going to be late. But wow, Gannon Thompson from deep in right center field, probably a couple feet in front of the warning track. He just absolutely lets it rip, and it one-hops into the glove of Norris McClure at third. The fly-out advances Sitzman, who's now 90 feet away from scoring the first run for the Whiskey Jacks. Another long fly ball will get him in. Caleb McDowell, 0 for 1 with a walk and a ground out, now steps in. Fastball high. The Whiskey Jacks have been shut out this season. One of the times it was, well, from the Sioux Falls Sunfish. The 1-0 misses away. It's two balls and no strikes. The Sunfish are one of the few teams to have never been shut out. Ground ball. Over to short, Garcia comes up with it. Throw over to first in time, and the Whiskey Jacks are on the board. Sitzman scores easily. McDowell baseman, number 32, Jake Jelly. does the job. He gets the Whiskey Jacks on the board, but it may be a bit too late. Jake Jelly up now with the bases empty. Six runs off seven hits for the Sunfish. One run off three for the Whiskey Jacks. First pitch is hit hard past Robbie Laughlin in the third base coach's box foul. The Whiskey Jacks have, in fact, been shut out four times this season. That's not going to happen today. Jake Jelly 0 for 2 on the day, striking out his last time up. Slow curveball coming in. Jelly far ahead of that one. He's frustrated with himself. It's 0-2. So the Sewers Valley Sabre Dogs are one of the two teams that have 
never even dealt with a shutout this year. They have not been shut out, nor have they shut out another team. I have to try and figure out who the other ones were. It's one more. Jelly doesn't chase a breaking ball in the left-handed batter's box. It's one and two. One ball, two strikes, two outs. The pitch off the end of the bat into right field. Charging in is Thompson. That's going to fall in front of him and Jim get by him a little bit. He'll just drop it, kind of misplays it a little bit, but Jelly doesn't take advantage of anything. Third baseman, number 31, Jackson Sorensen. Two hits now in the sixth inning off of Oblas. Jake Jelly ends his retired streak. And now brings up Jackson Sorensen, who singled and led to a batter's interference from Houston Fogelstrom his last time up. Takes the first pitch he sees straight over the head of Jonathan Brandon. Jelly's going to stop at second. Was considering going, but that was too shallow in right field. And I think Robbie Laughlin was saying, no, stay there. We can see what Gannon Thompson's arm can do. Will Olson going out to talk to his pitcher. And now that's three hits in this inning. Drew Ballou only allowed two in his five innings. Austin Oblas has allowed three and a run already in this one. And so the other team who is, nope, there they are. I thought I had it. Let me count one more. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, so there should be two teams. I'm losing it. Sewers Valley's for sure one of them. The Sunfish 1-0 and in games where a shutout has happened. They've shut out the Whiskey Jacks once this season. Oblas delivers a pitch low. It's one ball, no strikes to Houston Fogelstrom. Again, Fogelstrom was retired on the batter's interference his last time on. Let a strike go by, and well, he kind of fell through it into the throwing lane of Will Olson. Here's the 1-0. Fastball grounded sharply down the third base line, but foul. That's Jacob Lassier out in the bullpen, tossing it back in. Rolls all the way into the hand of Cade Clay who of Ahe. One ball, one strike to Fogelstrom. Here's the 1-1. A fastball rolled over down the third baseline again, this time just past the glove of Norris McClure. It's one ball, two strikes. This time it'll be Andrew Garcia running in to get that foul ball. He'll pick it up and take it back to the bullpen for himself. Old boss looking in, shakes off a sign. Gets the one he likes, sets, looks back at second, kicks and delivers. Swung on and missed, breaking ball in the dirt. The immediate tag by Will Olson puts down Fogelstrom with the strikeout. First strikeout of the game for Austin Oblas. He allows one run off, three hits, no errors, two left on base. We head to the final inning of this game two of the doubleheader. The Sunfish leading 6-1 to one over the Whiskey Jacks.
For the Sioux Falls Sunfish in the final inning of this one, it'll be Gannon Thompson, Benito Garcia, Adonis Forte. Thompson sees a pitch in the zone, but looks at it go by. It's no balls, one strike. Matthew Dahlquist back for his fourth inning of work, throws a fastball in, almost hits Gannon Thompson. We're one minute away from this being an official two-hour ball game. Haven't made it through full six and a half yet. Pitch now misses low. It's two balls, one strike. This one going a bit longer than the one earlier. Mitch Chatone and Sam Marhefke were dealing in that one, making the innings go by quickly. The Sunfish, after scoring three early on as Thompson swings through a curveball, Sunfish would score four early on and not score again until the seventh. Wheat City only scored two runs off of a solo shot by Houston Fogelstrom. So the game went by pretty quickly as a fastball just misses off the plate. It's three balls and two strikes. And I think it's because of pitches like that where they're borderline and they just haven't been really called strikes. And it's been both ways. It hasn't just been in favor of Wheat City or the Sunfish. Curveball comes in, and Thompson watches goes by. He has a few words for the home plate umpire, who doesn't even give him the time of day. Thompson goes down looking for the second time in a row. That's strikeout number four on the day for Dahlquist. He'll now see Benito Garcia. No one warming in the Sunfish bullpen. Austin Oblast will close this one out. Garcia checks his swing on a fastball at the knees. Six runs off seven hits for the Sunfish. One run off five for the Whiskey Jacks. Swing and a miss on that change up. It's 0-2. And your final... From Dickinson, the Badlands Big Sticks beat the Sewers Valley Sabredogs 9-2. That game going two and a half hours from Dakota. Dakota as the line drive goes into left field. Benito Garcia gets a base hit. That's his first base hit of the game. And Benito now back on the hitting path. From Dakota Community Bank and Trust Ballpark. That's a mouthful, but the, ba the Big Sticks took one against the Sabre Dogs. The Horseheads and Sk Sasquatch are still tied in Spearfish in the bottom of the eighth at three. As Adonis Forte steps in. First pitch he sees is a breaking ball on the outside corner. Nice curve ball. The Moo lead by two in the bottom of the seventh inning from Moeller Field. It's 10 to eight, another high scoring game. Fremont has been struggling with the arms as of late. The 0-1, fastball misses below the knees. Mining City Tommyknockers trail the Canyon County Spuds in the bottom of the third, two nothing. One ball, one strike, one out, runner at first. Forte sees a fastball go by outside. It's two and one. It'll be the seven, eight, nine hitters, the bottom of the order for the Whiskey Jacks in the bottom half of this frame to try and spark a comeback against the Sunfish. Pitch hits the outside corner. It's an even 2-2 count. Right now, the season series is tied at five apiece. The Whiskey Jacks thought they had it one, five to three after the Carroll, Iowa series. But now the Sunfish have won back-to-back, -back looking for their third straight. There goes Garcia. Forte rolls over a curveball. Up and firing is Sorensen. It's called a foul ball. As I think... Sorensen's right foot was just in foul territory. Is the only thing I can think of, because otherwise everything else about that was fair. Or wait. Are they giving? Oh, what are they doing? It's one out. We're seeing Cade Clay, who of Ahe, the home plate umpire, put his hands up. As if to say foul, but I guess they're calling it fair. That's a base hit for Adonis Forte. 
First pitch to Cade Clay, who of A, he goes low. It's one ball, no strikes. That was quite confusing because the home plate umpire l held his hands up foul. So I don't know what the actual call was on that because here's a strike right down the middle to Cade. It's 1-1. Because Sorensen then didn't really make a throw over to third, or over to first, excuse me. That was all too confusing. Here's the 1-1 one, one to Kalehu of Ahi. Runners on first and second, one out. Bounces in the dirt, stopped by Stein. There goes Garcia. The throw was a bit too high. Tag was late by Sorensen. Both runners advance. The double play ball is now out of play. And the double steal works and puts two runners in scoring position for the Sunfish. Cameron Daigle out in center field was bouncing around a little bit, probably trying to stay warm with the sun officially down. It is 57 right now in Grand Forks. Clay Hove, he fouls one off and evens the count up at two. Sunfish travel home and have two days off to sit and relax. Explore Sioux Falls if they haven't already. Here's the 2-2. Fouled to the backstop once more. Clay Hove, he will have a 2-2 pitch. And then this weekend, the Sunfish will travel to Fremont for a series against the Moo before hosting them on Monday and Tuesday. A curveball misses high. It's three balls, two strikes. The Wheat City Whiskey Jacks will host the Sewers Valley Saber Dogs for one game here on Friday before traveling to Corbett Field in Minot. Clay Hovehe rolls over one. They got Benito Garcia in a rundown up the third baseline. The throw now to Sitzman. Back to the pitcher. Garcia ducks out of the way. They say the tag got applied to Garcia. Kalehu Avehi all the way out at second. So there was a rundown. It was right off the hit. Garcia was booking at home. He's caught. Adonis Forte heads over to third, and Cade Kalehu Avehi reaches second on the fielder's choice. So it went third, so Sorensen to Stein to Sitzman to Dahlquist, who ended up making the tag. So for those of you keeping score at home, 5-2-6-1, fielder's choice. It'll be Jonathan Brandon now. Fastball is blown by him. It's a no ball, one strike. Fastball right down the plate. Looked at by Brandon. He's down 0-2. After their series against the Sabre Dogs this weekend, the Whiskey Jacks will have a two-game series up in Dickinson against the Badlands Big Sticks. Or over in Dickinson. I guess we're not in Sioux Falls. I usually just say up. Here's the 0-2. Grounder up the middle. Sitzman charging in. He makes the throw over to first. It's dug out by Jelly for out number three. Good scoop and throw there by Ethan Sitzman, the shortstop. We head to the bottom of the seventh, the final frame in this game from Kraft Field with the Sunfish still leading by five. Can the Whiskey Jacks come back? We'll see when we return on the Sunfish Radio Network and the Whiskey Jacks live stream on YouTube.
It'll be the 789 for the Wheat City Whiskey Jacks. Rhett Stein, Garrett Olson, and Cameron Daigle. Out of the three of them, there's just one hit. It's off of Stein in the second inning. Otherwise, collectively, the group is one for six today. Fastball misses high from Austin Oblast. And all six of those at-bats came against Drew Ballou. It's Austin Oblast in his second inning of work. He throws a fastball high. He's been struggling to find the zone since coming in. Usually it takes him a little bit to calm down. When the catcher like Will Olsen behind the plate, shouldn't take too long. This time he rolls over one just past the bare hands of Robbie Laughlin. I think Robbie could have easily barehanded that one, but instead he wanted to keep all of his fingers and not break any of them. With 5.14 remaining in the fourth quarter of the NBA Finals, it's Suns 108, Bucks 96. Pitch misses low, and Stein is ahead. Three balls, one strike. He fouls off a fastball. It's a full, full count. Here's the payoff to Stein. Fastball popped up high, deep to left field. Adonis Forte giving chase at the wall. It's off the wall. He runs into it. It's actually a home run. Adonis Forte ran straight into the wall. The umpire's calling a home run as that went over, apparently. I thought it bounced off the top, but now Lane Hufty's running out to get his left fielder as Adonis Forte just slammed straight into a an ad out in the left center field wall. You can see which one he did, too, because looks like it's come unhooked. He hit that one hard. Rhett Stein with the solo home run. Makes it a four-run ball game. Took the payoff pitch over the wall. That's the second home run allowed today by Sunfish Pitching. Lane Hubdy and Walker Bullington not out there long, barely out there at all as Forte's up and walking around. I kind of lost the ball as it came down. Again, it's... The weird angle where the umpire's kind of standing in front of me. He was off to the side kindly enough so I could at least see Forte chasing after it. And while that one just cleared the wall out in left center field, I was about to say before the pitch that the wind was carrying out there a little bit. It's now 6-2 to two for Garrett Olson. It's a fastball misses low and away. So it's just a four-run ball game now. Two runs off six hits for Wheat City. Six runs off eight hits for the Sunfish. Ground ball. Garcia picks it up, fires it over, and it's out number one. Olsen will finish the day 0 for 3, unless somehow the Whiskey Jacks come through the lineup once more. And we will have Zoe Hicks pinch hitting for Cameron Daigle. Hicks, to my understanding, this might be her final game as she is leaving the team to head to Europe later this week. A fastball misses high to her. She played softball at Louisiana Tech. Had quite a successful career down there. She swings off a fastball, but it goes out of play. It's a 1-1 count. And on point streak through 10 games, she has yet to get a hit this season. Has reached a few times. Takes a fastball that misses in, but just by a little bit to the lefty, Hicks. Two balls, one strike. She has an on-base percentage of 136. Has walked three times, struck out eight this season. Here's the 2-1. Takes a fastball at the chest. It's 2-2. Two -two. And again, it's 
A pretty tough transition from softball to baseball, so you got to give her credit. And she doesn't have a lot of plate appearances, just 19 at-bats. Hasn't played since July 2nd where she went 0-for-1. She grounds one off, a defensive swing and a fastball low. It's 2-2. Two balls, two strikes. Here's the pitch. Breaking ball, got her. She strikes out looking on the outside corner. Two outs now in the bottom of the seventh inning. And the Whiskey Jacks are down to their last out. It's Ethan Sitzman who doubled and scored in the sixth inning to put the Whiskey Jacks on the board in the first place. And now he's the Jacks' last hope. Oblas sets from the stretch he delivers. Curve ball low. The wind has now died. Aside from a slight breeze in the American flag in center field. The 1-0. Fastball driven high and deep to right center field. Thompson has enough room to get this one. And the Sunfish sweep the Whiskey Jacks. And if this is officially the last time that the teams play, the Sunfish take the season series 6-5. to five. They sweep Wheat City, move to 6-1 and one on the second half of the season, and move two games above 500. A rock-paper-scissors match between Kenneth Dutka and Norris McClure is taking place on home plate, and Kenneth Dutko wins two games out of three. He beat Scissors with Rock and Paper over Rock. And now the Sunfish take this one and take the series. They have two days off. They have played 16 games in 15 days, and they deserve two games off. It was a solo shot by Rhett Stein that looked like the bats would spark. For the Whiskey Jacks, they did not. They lose their third straight. The Sunfish win their third straight and improve to 6-1 and one to start off the second half of the season. From Craft Field in Grand Forks, for all you Wheat City Whiskey Jacks fans and Sioux Falls Sunfish fans, this is David Coyer saying have a good night, go fish, and go Jacks.